Misa got a grand show today. That's why you liken us, Misa thinks, on Bad Movies Rule, the worst movie podcast ever recorded. And today, we're off to a galaxy far, far away for Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Let's go. I had to. Are you going <laughs> to talk like that the entire time? <laughs> oh, I promise. <laughs> I you. promise I won't. That was something. I, I promise I won't. But it's hard after watching this not to not to pick up a little bit of slang here and there. A little bit of Jar Jar speak. A little bit of Jar Jar. Yeah. Jar Jar isms. I had my eight-year-old watch this with me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We got to the pod racing scene and she goes, you know, Dad, this isn't a bad movie. Well. And I was like. Thank you. That's the audience. Well, we're here to decide that. What kind of personal hell would it be if your kid picked that up and started talking like Jar Jar all the time? Though? She did think he was funny. But <sighs> to be fair, she's eight. Of course she did. And when this movie came out, I was eight. <laughs> and you loved Jar Jar back then. I didn't love Jar Jar. I thought he was annoying. But I didn't hate him. I just was kind of like, just tone it down. All right. I respect that. But we'll right. get in. I mean, all right. sorry. As you can hear, Ryan Maddell is in the house today. Welcome, Dr. Maddell. Howdy. And the lovely Nicole Freer is with us as well. Salutations. And at the kids' table, we've got the mayor, Ryan Mueller. I'm in session. Hello, sir. What's going on? <laughs> um, before I introduce our special guest, I also want to say, because I know there's going to be people that are upset by this, because for at least a couple months, Patrick Riley has been talking about how much he hates Star Wars, and everybody, when they found out we were doing Star Wars, they got to have Patrick, got to have Patrick. Um, and then we had to cancel the original recording session, because I've been having some health struggles, and then we rescheduled it to Friday, and then we changed it back to Thursday, or we were trying to figure out, rather, between Thursday and Friday what we were doing. Anyway... I call Patrick because he's not here yet, and he goes, oh, I thought we were doing it tomorrow, and he lives like an hour and a half away, so Patrick is not going to be here. I think he actually just pulled an ice pirate's like Clint. <laughs> <laughs> Got halfway through and turned it off. Is that what it is? <laughs> Watched five minutes and said, nope. Maybe. Jar Jar shows up, and he's like, I'm out. I'm out. Get me out of here. <laughs> but we do have a first timer yeah. on the show. Kyle Hartnell, how are you, sir? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. It's It's been a pleasure. It's been a uh, Quite a while. Yeah, dude. I'm, I'm glad that you're here. Kyle is a friend of mine, but he also does the website for Bad Movies Rule. So anybody that's ever visited badmoviesrule.com to sign up for the email newsletter, Kyle is the is the brains behind Woo! all that, the man behind the curtain, so to speak, and a lover of Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah perfect. Yeah. So I was as soon as I heard, or not heard, well, the BMR supercomputer spit it out that we're going to sure. be doing, yes, because these are random, uh, Star Wars, I was like, Kyle, now's your chance. Let's jump on. Your chance to defend Jar Jar Binks. Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Patrick. We'll help. <laughs> hey, squeeze me. Oh, no, thank you. Don't, nope. Nope. Well, let's just dive straight into the vitals, if that works for everybody. The A uh, lot of this information, I feel like, is well known, but let's just do it because it's what we do. Movie was directed by George Lucas. What? Movie was written by George Lucas. Everybody knows this stuff. Movie starred Liam Neeson, Ewan McGregor, Natalie Portman, and Jake Lloyd, along with many other people that we're going to get to as we go through this. The budget for now, an um, astronomical budget f for the movies that we generally cover on this show, mm -hmm. $115 million. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, that's $1999 too. Yeah. Right, exactly. And now is the part on Bad Movies Rule where we say, and it made 12 bucks. But that's not the case no. right. at all. No. Right. Nope. Uh, this movie made $1 billion. Holy. At the box office. Hugh Dr. Evil. Yeah. That's a lot $1 of saltines. $1 billion. Yeah, it's a lot. This is 1969. That kind of money doesn't even exist. <laughs> right? Even the original didn't do that, I don't think. Right. At least not on release. Maybe by, I'm sure lot. by now. It by now, I'm yeah. sure, yeah. It's got a 6.5 on IMDb, which is tied for 25th best. So we've done 24 movies out of our 147 that are higher rated on IMDb. This uh, right now is tied with some of the other ones we did that were also a 6.5 was Terminator Salvation and Last Action Hero. Those that just kind of get a measuring stick for where we are with... So it's slightly better than Laser Blast, is what uh, you're saying. Considering Laser Blast was like a 2.7. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. A little bit better. And that was the movie taking shots at this at this franchise. Yes, it was. <laughs> 
Uh, the critic score is this is how it qualifies. Now, I, some of you, maybe you not even made it this far into the episode because you said, <laughs> Star Wars, what the frick are you guys doing? I'm out of here. I'm logging off. I'm not listening to this. Settle down. Fits the okay. criteria, man. Here's how it qualified. 52% critic score. It's rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. 59% audience score. It's really? a rotten Ooh. audience score. So by both metrics, it qualifies for the show. So wow. that's it. Okay? That's why we're doing Star Wars. Hopefully you listen this far for the explanation. Yes. And it's one of only three Star Wars movies that will ever appear on BMR because only three out of the nine, we're talking Skywalker Saga, qualify. I mean, technically, it should be four, though. Which, well... <laughs> <laughs> Which one are you saying should be but doesn't? We, we don't have to get into it. Oh, it's okay. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, my home right now up. is just yelling. Like, <laughs> I know. Episode one and two qualify, okay. and episode nine, Rise of Skywalker, are the three that qualify. So the other ones we'll have to do on Good Movies Rule. Mm, and speaking of... Maybe like mid for two, the, other, <laughs> yeah. the other two new ones. Yeah. Is there mid movies rule? <laughs> mid movies? <laughs> mid Meh. movies are okay? Meh movies? Meh yeah. movies. <laughs> No, no, I'm so, just being a hater. No, I hear you. It's okay to hate. Uh, you know, like I say, like what you like. You can also hate what you hate. We actually okay. promote it here on Bad Movies Rule. Hate everybody. Yeah, that's right. We're oh. pro-hate if it's a bad enough movie, for sure. <laughs> uh, look, speaking of Good Movies Rule, if you want to hear some of our other shows, you can go to our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Rule. And you can sign up at all kinds of different tiers, but you get all these other shows that we're doing. Good Movies Rule, On the House, The Horror Reel, Cartoon Clubhouse, where we talk about all kinds of other topics besides just bad movies. And so as little as three bucks, you can sign up for that. You'll be backing the show, which we appreciate and support. Thank you. But you'll also be getting all kinds of extra bonus content as well. So it's a win-win. All the way around. Also, if you want to sign up, uh, like I said, on the website for the newsletter, we send that out every month. It's badmoviesrule.com, and you can sign up. Just scroll down to the bottom, sign up for the newsletter, and we'll get that in your inbox as well. If you want to reach out to the show, the two ways that you can do that are this show is trash at gmail.com, and you can also call the show 262 857 262 757 8567. That messed me up for a second. There's also one other way they can get a hold of us, though. Yeah, go ahead. I know it's your favorite. Oh, here we go. You can send us physical mail. Just saying. Good. <laughs> we appreciate it. I appreciate it. Ryan gets really happy when he gets to open boxes. You don't even want to know so, how happy I am. No. You know, go I get, for it. I get pretty excited. I'm like a little kid on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Do it. Do it. <laughs> All right, guys. So you ready to you ready to jump into the plot? Yes. Of yeah. Star Wars? Yes. Let's do it. We're going to go scene by scene through this thing, and then at the end, we're going to give out some awards. So those of you who have never listened, buckle up, because we are about to get started. And the movie starts the same way every Star Wars movie ever since the dawn of time has ever started, with a title scroll, a wall of text floating off into the nothingness of space. Something about blockades and trade negotiations. I almost called my CPA to, like... Uh, interpret the thing for me because I'm like, why is this so complicated? Imagine a nine-year-old reading about trade negotiations in the in the Star Wars crawl. You just be like, what is what is this? I want to watch Star Wars. It's it a movie about taxes. This yeah. is going to be so fun. It's right? very economically focused. It yeah. is. What's a five hundred one c? Yeah, and senators and you know political machinations and all this stuff. I, I used the see word machinations the this week. Pew, pew. Oh, did you? Isn't that fun? It's a great word. Okay, we can move on. I just, really it came cookies. out of my mouth, and I was like, we're, okay, moving on. Long story short. Yes. Uh, the Trade Federation is installing a blockade in front of the planet Naboo because there's some kind of trade dispute going on. And so the uh, Senate, the Republic, has sent uh, two ambassadors, in air quotes, the chancellor. The so. chancellor, sorry. Yeah, the, the chancellor, chancellor sent uh, two ambassadors who definitely aren't Jedi um, <laughs> to, to the Trade Federation to negotiate a settlement, so essentially. They show Naboo, and it shows the blockade. Logistically, if people are leaving the planet... I feel like you'd need more than just a single ring of ships around the planet <laughs> right? in one little line. The blockade ultimately means nothing because about three or four different times, they come and go without a problem yeah. from the planet. 
It's a symbolic blockade. So yes. it's a blockade that's accomplishing nothing. You'd have Unless... to be flying missions around the planet with all the fighters and everything else because you yeah, let's just we'll fly the southern right. you know south pole and fly out from there right, right. they'll never yeah. see us the nabooian penguins will hang out with you. right <laughs> exactly penguins. this is getting off hand they still have their materials <laughs> why isn't this blockade working i don't know <laughs> they, they none of them seem really adept at what they're doing except for the jedi that's that's it they're the only competent ones they go in that they this droid leads them to the you know the conference room or whatever, and even the droids come back like these are totally Jedi, you know. By the way, what did you say? <laughs> I said they are Jedi Knights. Two Jedi. I believe. I'm not going in there. <laughs> That's right. He's like, uh, hell no. Um, <laughs> Thank you for asking. Right. Where's our ship out of here? <laughs> and uh, Obi Wan is in there, and and Obi Wan's first scene that kind of painting him as the the more hot-headed at least of the two We're like come on you know let's go let's go and he goes be mindful of the living force obi-wan and you know which is just a jedi way of saying i'm tired of your baby nonsense you know chill hold out your horses. hold your horses it's gonna hold be your fine. space horses <laughs> <laughs> okay also can we just one sec i'm sorry i don't want to derail <laughs> us again but I, apparently i'm going to do this all episode Excellent. but obi-wan has a mullet mm. yeah did you realize that yeah, that little like ponytail little... if you take it out it's a mullet yeah I had to explain that Lauren was saying how nasty his haircut was, and I was like, you know that's a mullet, right? So, in the second episode, he has a full-on space mullet. Yeah, that's true, too. Like, full-on. No, yeah. It's no longer held back. Space yeah. Jesus. He's like, once, once space Jesus, yeah. Once uh, he gets into the lead role there, he's letting it all out. Oh, yeah. He's like, it's but time it is, to he lets it grow a little. At least it's not like the shaved mullet. No. But, but his ponytail might get messed up in battle, but it doesn't. It, no. It, oh, do you like his little braid, too? The little Jedi braid? Yes, yeah. which way later I got to figure out how mini Anakin gets one. We'll talk about that <laughs> way later. For perfect. I'm not sure. Here you go, young perfect. Padawan. Right? It's an extension. Yeah, they just, yeah, uh, exactly. They just <laughs> hit them out. Go to the Jedi yeah. uh, in mini Jedi store. It's a and clip pick on. One up. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a clip like, on. <laughs> or you use the force and grow it out really yeah, fast. Yeah, you sure? put your, your thumb in your mouth and blow. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> Comes out braided. Yeah. The uh, the droid, like we said, tells the Asian lizards from the uh, Trade Federation. Uh, they're like, "What Jedi?" Lauren uh, was like, "Why are they Japanese?" <laughs> it's like, that, I don't know. That's what I thought that's, when I rewatched. They totally it. Like, had oh, I didn't. Accents. I forgot these guys were from yeah. Japan. Yeah. The Emperor calls on the Zoom call, the holo call, whatever those things are that you know the Emperor calls on. The Zoom. Ring ring, Emperor. Yeah. <laughs> Kill them immediately, right? So they gas the room, but. Qui-Gon's like, Jedi breath hold. Right. <laughs> yes, which Yoda, I'm sure, teaches. They unveil all kinds of new Jedi powers in this movie. If Considering it up to this point, all you've seen is Luke Skywalker, right? And a little bit of Obi-Wan and a little bit of Yoda. To be yeah. fair, when we see Luke, he's learning from old man Yoda and a little bit from obi-wan yeah yeah and so there's like we don't there's like it's a lost art right oh yeah i'm not i'm not yeah. saying that that these That's weren't legitimate yeah. or it was bad but it's it's crazy when right? you haven't seen all of these they can do everything it's mind-boggling right the the when the roly-poly droids roll yes. up and they're like okay we're just gonna speed run out of here <laughs> That's I don't what know, saying, dude. the only time they show it and my mind exploded <laughs> as an eight-year-old i was just like what yeah. they can go fast fast forward activate i've seen this movie <laughs> countless times and it took me i don't know until i was about 15 years old to realize that they actually forced jumped out of the room i was like yeah yeah how are they down the hall already <laughs> where'd they go <laughs> yeah so prepare to fast forward <laughs> <laughs> looney tunes like music kicks in <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, I also thought it was really nice of the gas to stay in the room even when the doors opened oh, up. Oh, sure. You know? yeah. yeah, that's super yeah. nice. It just stayed perfectly in, in the room. It's just like any, you know, any good stink cloud, it just kind of stays where it's they're like, there, you know. We're not messing with this Jedi. We tried right. to kill it. And they yeah, just that, yeah. Breath. Things are different on Naboo, okay? The gas was like, we'll stay in here. Yeah, they, <laughs> they got lightsabers. You know what that'll do to a stink cloud? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they, they were, were like, not, mm. And they were like, you will stay as a gaseous form in this room, <laughs> waving their hand. <laughs> they, uh, so they walk outside. There's six battle droids, and these battle droids are like made out of toothpicks, okay? They, they're very skinny little nothing things. And I'm like, six battle, send 66 battle droids. Like, these things are useless against Jedi. They're, they're the epitome of cannon fodder. 
I don't know that they're useful against anything. Well, I mean, yeah. later on, they do pretty good against the Gungans. Yeah, But well, that might be just more of an indictment on the Gungans. Yeah, have you seen the Gungans? <laughs> then, <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you're uh, promoting Jar Jar Binks to general, yeah. you know, I mean... They've got limited That's options. True. Yeah. I wanted to say that I, th- I think th- this time when they were first kicking some butt, it's like the first time that viewers who love Star Wars or viewers in general have seen Jedi really kick butt. Yes. Before yes. that, they were just like, wow, wow. I mean, right. Luke did some stuff. Vader did stuff. But yeah. this was like... At a different speed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for well, sure. And I think George changed... When he initially did the original trilogy, lightsabers were more of like almost like a broadsword in his mind, where they're heavy, uh, slow, you know, elegant weapons, right? Right. Samurai. Whereas samurais, yeah, samurai. samurai. Okay, yeah. 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 And so then when he gets over here, he's kind of like, well, we're gonna have it faster and sexier, whatever, right? And so, right, it was definitely a change of pace in the. And combat. then you have a really hard time retconning why, when they're all older, why, why Anakin and Obi Wan, when they're older fight so differently. Well, because Obi-Wan had arthritis. There you go. And so then Anakin, oh, or uh, <laughs> Luke was like, oh, this is how we use these, slowly. Got it, got <laughs> it. So as, as you said, the uh, the roly-poly droids come in, which uh, FYI is cheating, totally cheating, because uh, they have shields. I'm like, what the, f-? as a kid, well, a kid, I was like 19. Yeah, I was yeah. like 19, yeah, 20 when this came that's out. I'm like, I did not know these existed. But you know, I was like, what the kind of bull, bull crap is this, man? They get well, shields? Why didn't they send those in the first place? They only said because they only have three of them. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> the entire system. And they're expensive. Right, yeah. Oh, yeah. They man. probably are really expensive. They're very expensive. Force shields. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and for, as far as the battle droids go, I think they're effective in force. I think that's the only way they're really effective. Right. Is to be used as an overwhelming yes. force of cannon fodder. Yeah. Right. I right. guess for anything, it's like two of something, not so scary. When you get to 50 of something, kind of scary. Right. Anything, birds, ants pencils anything <laughs> but then you get like two thousand of them and you're like i'm out i am right. out so i think maybe that's it right uh roly poly droids they speed rush away like you said and uh this is where we get i i, I kind of like this line from obi-wan will you write about one thing master the negotiations <laughs> were short <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh anakin a few times or, oh obi-wan yeah one of the few times that you can have the mug on screen and it's not a problem. <laughs> right. It's Obi-Wan. You're like, all right, you get a pass. You get a pass. They're from Space Britain, by the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, they all have a regional accent from right. Earth. It, <laughs> different yeah. parts of space. Following the syntax. Yes, they it's do. Yeah. And they dress <laughs> like it's the 1880s. Yeah, I quite, mean, we just throw those questions out. It would have been funny if he made them all British and it was just the history behind it was that Britain made its way all the way out into space. <laughs> Well, they, that's what they said. The sun never set on the British Empire. That's I right. mean, that includes yeah. a galaxy far, far away as well. Everybody they, learned the language based on one episode of Are You Being Served or something from <laughs> BBC for a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> Queen Amidala calls the Viceroy and basically says, you know, mess around and find out. I mean, essentially, you know, because yeah. he's basically threatening to invade, you know. Uh, you know, I'm This gonna, is perfectly legal what we're doing. That's right. That's right. Um. Can we talk about Natalie Portman for a second? Is is she doing that voice? No, she's not. I actually did some research. Okay. They actually toned her voice down to make it sound deeper and more regal like a queen. Because she's like, okay, Viceroy, but understand that I will not tolerate any war. Like It was just like, I know I almost sound like Cartman. Yeah, but it was just, just going to say, it was <laughs> kind of like, I will not do this, Viceroy. Like that's kind of how she sounded a little nice bit. You know? It was very monotone. Yeah, yeah. It was just, she yeah, also I'd... dropped R's, you know, like yeah. um, the, the, the force, force, you know, et cetera. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I'm, I don't know where I went. We but will that. be will we upset no, if you do that. No, I think at the end, like like Brits do, really, like just how it, it works. <laughs> but then when she was her other self, I, I, and she was like, "Hi, y'all." Well, but I, 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 I was like, "Oh, is Natalie?" Making a choice, or the director tell her to make a choice to really help us think they are two different people with two different. That's what I. I that's what so. I landed on. I came. They had to have done the voice so that the other girl could do the voice, and just to set up the whole decoy thing. Yeah, yeah. that's the only because the other can't get the other girl to just sound exactly like Natalie Portman. Yeah. Without having her dub all. Yeah, the you lines. have to do so. Yeah. So. So later when she's like, like she is my decoy. <laughs> I don't know why she's southern all of a sudden. <laughs> I actually have a lot of questions about this. How yeah. that works? Because yeah. There's just a lot of questions. Oh, please, yeah. Once we get there, please make sure you bring those up. Uh, the Jedi sneak down to Naboo on the invading ships, 
and Qui Gon accidentally <sighs> <laughs> runs into Jar Jar Binks and saves his life. Accidentally, whoops, maybe on purpose. No, I think he saved him on purpose, ran into him, back. and then he immediately regretted it. <laughs> or rather, Jar Jar ran into him. Yeah, yeah, right. That's accurate. <sighs> I'm trying really hard not to use the voice. <laughs> No, go ahead. No, I mean, it's fine. I don't for, want if to. If ever there was a time, <laughs> cut it Save loose. me again. <laughs> when he did say, though, uh, excuse me, my daughter looked at me and she's like, I'm going to be using that. Oh, I was like, great. please well, don't. that particular <laughs> phrase, I don't know if it came from the movie, but people were saying it. I wondered if yeah. it was like a cool phrase from that time that they actually put in, but then it didn't age well. I yeah. think it was like a Pauly Shore thing almost. That sounds like it something Pauly yeah. Shore would say. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's probably George's attempt to... Relate to the youth. Youth in it up. Yeah, Jar Jar yeah is we still hip. had like Polly, Polly Shore at that time. Ugh. So George was like, ah, oh, let's throw some of that in there. Can you imagine Why if not? George was like, all right, Jar Jar, now say Kawabunga, dude. <laughs> <laughs> or can you imagine if Polly Shore was just himself yeah. in the movie? Oh, if he was Jar Jar? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> What's up, buddy? <laughs> Going back to my city underwater. You saved me again. <laughs> Do you have those special nose clips? That's right. <laughs> Excellent. Using the juice. That's right. Bud. Let me go get some juice. space. Snugs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so stupid. Uh, so, <laughs> wow. Jar, I don't know how they got on the topic, but Jar Jar said something about you know Misa smart, and he said, and Qui Gon. Oh, I speak. I speak. That's right. He's like, speak. He says something. That's right. Yeah. The ability to speak doesn't mean you're smart. Now get out of here, right? Yeah. And this is the moment where it all could have diverted, and the moment Jar Jar said no. Misa stay, and I just went, no! <laughs> I can still hear the echoes. There was the moment right there. Uh, That's the moment that right? Qui-Gon decided he was just going to let Maul stab him. <laughs> <laughs> that was the me moment from where prison. they could have parted ways. Yeah. But the line, no, Misa stay, just talk about a ripple effect that had ramifications for just outside the movie. Well, Jar Jar did help the Gungans defeat the droids. Oh, he helped? Yeah. He inspector gadgeted and yeah. stumbled around yeah. accidentally. He accidentally people. opens the thing. We'll get there. <laughs> they find they find Obi Wan running from some droids and you know hook, hook back up with him and they all go. I'm I know some of this I'm going through quickly, but there's just not much to say. So we're uh, they all go to the Gungan city. All right? He's like, hey, you know we uh, we got ships and things and whatever you need. So it's all underwater. So they got to dive down to like, think of like Atlantis. I'm assuming, why am I describing this? You've seen Star Wars if you're listening <laughs> yeah. to this episode, I would imagine. Okay. So I'll, I'll my, descriptive, my descriptiveness, I'm going to dial it back a little bit. Okay. But they go down to the Gungan City underwater. I thought those breathing things were cool. That was cool. Those were cool. Yeah. Okay. So, but, Although, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, so the, did they just, they carry like not even wallets, but do they just keep nose plugs that were special for underwater in their yeah. robes? That's it. They have no method of payment. Sweet. But if they ever need to dive down anywhere. Maybe. Credits will do. Yeah. <laughs> they have a yeah. secret pocket for Jedi accessories. <laughs> sure. <laughs> like, the, like Batman's utility belt? Yep, right. <laughs> just like a trench coat just inside the pocket. Nice. <laughs> Jedi shark repellent. Like, uh, Qui Gon, that's just a regular pocket. No, it's yeah. a Jedi pocket. No, that's right. <laughs> he uses the Force. Don't ask questions. They, uh, they're swimming. First, here's the other thing they swim down in those heavy Jedi robes. They don't take the outer robes yeah, off. Yeah, those things look like they soak up water like nobody's business. They look like, they, they, look like they weigh 40 pounds dry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And they dive in in those things, and I'm like, yo. Take in three times their weight in water? <laughs> right. Exactly. But then when they jump out in Gungan City, they're dry in about four seconds. Yeah, so the, the Gungan bubble, it's like a dryer thing. You just go through it. and Is it, that what it is? Yeah. It's like a it, Dyson, it Dyson dryer. It's, okay. it's like the water from uh, Double Dragon. You just get out, and <laughs> you're dry. You Perfect. Know? Yeah. Because they, it looks like they spritz their faces, but their hair is, like, not soaked, and they're clothes are basically dry they just put a little extra gel in right for that scene <laughs> yeah need the need the extra hold exactly um it's an unknown jedi power i don't know if you knew that quick drying cool. yeah. there are so many we don't, even know, we don't even know master use quick dry force dry force dry, force dry. <laughs> <laughs> your robes are now dry or maybe before they got in <laughs> even in the water they're like you will be impervious to water and the, the cloaks were like we will be impervious to water oh that's it see <laughs> perfect um, I wish Jedi had to say 
the force uh, power they're using. Like judo <laughs> chop, like off yeah, the they power. have yeah. to say it. <laughs> like force dry, <laughs> force dry. Be awesome. Uh, force, force push. push. <laughs> but then your enemy knows exactly what you're up to. Yeah, Jedi mind trick. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Wait a minute, you just said Jedi mind trick. <laughs> Hold on a second. Wait. Jedi mind trick. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I heard it again. But you have to keep doing it. Yeah. You keep just canceling it never, out. Never ending. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so they ask Boss Nass for some help, and he's like, nah. <laughs> well, yeah. First he goes, and then he's like, nah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not helping. But he mind tricks Boss Nass, the Qui-Gon does, into getting a ship up to the surface. I, I missed it when I was young. I didn't, it wasn't until recently that oh, I realized oh. he yeah. you know, did the hand wave and got the ship. These Jedi straight up jacked a boat from this guy. They stole this ship. Yep. Basically. No scruples at all. That's I was just going to say, the morality changes throughout the <laughs> film. Yeah. It's like, uh, you're just going to let us have one of your boats. Yeah. And everybody's okay with this? Well, I think <laughs> that maybe people look at it like uh, police apprehending or taking someone's vehicle for a chase. Or, yeah, commandeering a vehicle. Go. Maybe like that. Well, kind I think of. they offered Cosmic to cops, take, that's what they are. Yeah. They offered to take Jar Jar with them, so I think they, he probably would just gave him a boat anyway. It was a good deal. That was okay. another chance to leave Jar Jar behind, and they're like, <laughs> he's going to be punished. But they just they just go, please keep him here. <laughs> he's the force. <laughs> no, they could have left him to die, but they're too nice. They're not, not too nice to steal something, but they're too nice mm-hmm. to leave him to die. And so then we get the epic boat trip through the, through the planet core. I... <laughs> As a kid, this was such a cool scene. The yeah. monsters the were amazing. Yeah, I love this scene. Really? And Qui Gon's yeah. like, "There's always a bigger fish." Like, I loved that scene. It's as a really kid. cool. Even now, I just think it looks great. It looks great. It does look good. Yeah. Here's the thing: I wanted more of a payoff to the "There's always a bigger fish" thing. Mm. I wanted there to be another like bigger, another fish. big. I thought there was On when I was watching that it. Guy. I thought there was a third one. Right. And four hours later, just I was bigger so and bigger fishes. One is eating the planet. Naboo. Yeah. The Trade Federation's like, "Get out of here!" <laughs> <laughs> The end, George the Lucas. End. <laughs> George Lucas. <laughs> well, if there's always a bigger fish, that should go on ad infinitum until the end yep. of time. Until yep. the universe itself is consumed. By a fish. I, yeah, I, I don't know why, but I thought there was a, another third bigger fish yeah, that I, just I, never showed up. I and seriously I, felt like I had misremembered that there wasn't. Well, I think that maybe it was the surprise that it had like, maybe that was like the, the extra maybe. surprise. There was like four though, right? If I one, remember two, right, you three, had the two four, original yeah. and then there's yeah. another one that went after him with another bigger fish, but yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Can it's just ex- been like a nesting oh. doll of fishes. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, can someone explain to me what Jar Jar did to help them navigate through the planet core? Oh, that was the only reason why he's like, <laughs> we need right. him. We, Qui-Gon goes, we need him. We need a navigator. So that's the only reason why they took Jar Jar. And all he, he does, does nothing there. during the All time. he does and is he shriek. Do he shrieks. Right. He, he jumps. He grabs on people. Well, he lets he, them know there's a goober fish. And then, <laughs> oh, goober fish. <laughs> Every fish to him is a goober fish. And then Qui-Gon eventually just puts him to sleep. I'm like, relax. Hold on. He goes, relax. And he goes, I'm like, yeah. he's got Mantis's powers from Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> yes. He can just be like, sleep. <laughs> well, and then Obi-Wan's like, you overdid it. <laughs> right. <laughs> like he's going to have a hangover later. So that makes me even more mad that Jar Jar's there because they didn't even need him to navigate. Well, way, way, way later, he like helps out by accident by falling off of space tanks or whatever. Yeah, so no, maybe, that's true. you know. All right. So Naboo is now occupied, but the Jedi sneak up on a patrol escorting the queen and her guard. Okay. They, there's like a under, under occu, uh, they're under occupation now. And so mm-hmm. there's all these droids and they're marching the queen and her guard around and they kind of sneak up on them. The three of them. Jar Jar is even attempting to sneak. A guy can't sneak anywhere. Okay. They ambush the battle droids again, useless against Jedi. I mean, they're just like, they're barely putting any effort into these lightsaber moves and these droids are just flying into little pieces. Well, well they're not the- even, sorry. Oh, no, you're good. They're not even built very, um, I don't want to say aerodynamically, but sturdily. We'll just say that. they. I just feel like a maker would have thought more. Maybe it was like lack of metal they were working with. I feel like I could punch one of their heads <laughs> off. You probably could. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, they are built to be very compact, mm-hmm. so maybe that's part of it. But when they even when they force push them, they just fall apart. In I mean, pieces. they're as bad as the Lego battle droids. <laughs> Do you remember right. those? Yes. Those just fell apart, too. Did they just put the word battle over like some other kind of droid, maybe? Just like they were like, you know, toothpick harvesting droids. And then they're like, well, we need a battle. Uh, slap. 
bathroom cleaning droid is our now battle droid. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Roger, Roger. <coughs> um, they, they. I, here's my one theory about when they keeps letting Jar Jar. I, I thought maybe all right. They 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 let Jar Jar come with to navigate through the core, which now you point out he didn't even really do that. And he just maybe assumed that they're following him into a dangerous mission that eventually he'll just get killed. <laughs> that, that might have been Jar a strategy. Jar Jar, go be the distraction. <laughs> yeah. And that'll just be it. And I'm thinking maybe even with this first battle with the battle droids, that they killed all the battle droids, and I felt like Qui-Gon turned around and went, oh, he's oh, still alive. Okay. Really? <laughs> <laughs> or just more like, all right. I'm like, cool, fancy that. He made it. <laughs> cool. Uh, after some arguing about where the queen is wanting to go, uh, the queen's like, I'm coming with you. We're going out to the, you know, they get the Senate to help us or whatever. They go to the hangar and, uh, they try to talk, talk to this droid or they try to like sweet talk a droid, you know, to get past him into the hangar. And the droid does this whole like, what, huh? You, you're under arrest. And again, they just wipe the floor lightsabers and all these droids just, the, the, one of them is literally looking the wrong way while Obi-Wan's cutting his head off. Like, they're all in circle, and the other one's, like, shooting this way, getting chopped in half. Yeah. All right, <laughs> I'll stop beating up on these battle droids, but it's just... It's not really a fair fight. George, could you just... Ama- it, it, you made a thing called a battle droid. Could you at least have make, made it... Make it battle? Something. Ominous, like, make it a threat? Yeah, it doesn't have to be, like, the biggest threat of all time, because you know there's going to be a lot of them, right? But it can be, like... Something better than just like a stiff breeze. Well, maybe he already wanted stormtroopers to never have aim, so I guess maybe that's just his jam. That the like it's just his jam. like the yeah the uh, a giant opposition horde has no aim thing that can't shoot yeah. anything. Or he's just trying to show how op the Jedi are. Yeah, I don't think these droids were made to fight Jedi. That's right. Just, yeah, gotcha. like like I don't think he was assuming that just local idiots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's why that's why the vo- <laughs> viceroy was like, "What did you say?" <laughs> yeah, got it. Yeah. Um, all right, they take off and, you know, they're immediately under fire because of the, you know, the Trade Federation and stuff. And How did they, they get they, away? Yeah, they went through the, the one spot that the blockade was. This is the, well, this is the one time they had trouble with the blockade when they were driving through. And, the, and they're getting shot at. Remember, one of the panels gets blown off the top of their ship. Yeah. They send all these R2 units yep. up to fix it. And this is our first time we get to see... R2-D2. Yeah. The greatest droid in the history I'm of ever. I'm wearing my R2-D2 earrings. Right oh, now. nice. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. I Just a quick moment to gush about R2-D2. <laughs> because, of course, he saves all of their lives. Who doesn't love R2-D2? Okay. This is the first time he shows up in the whole... Well, it's, chronologically, it's the first time right. he shows up in the entire saga. Mm-hmm. And he's saving everyone's life in the first minute. I think... Is there a Star Wars movie that has gone by where R2 hasn't saved everybody's life? <laughs> <No>. I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> or at least the main character's life? Why and why don't we have an R2 like uh what do you call it? Like a like a movie just on him, like right. his, his origin Give me story. The R, the R2 origin story, right? Yeah. Yeah, everybody else has when we have Solo, we have Rogue One, we have Give us a, an R2 movie, man. Like R2's on. accomplished more than Han Solo has. That's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in, 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 he's just he's just incredible. Incredible little droid. The other droids are getting blasted off of this ship. And he's just like... <whistles> like right. well, he's fixing he's his just stuff. Doing his thing. It's yeah. just, I can't do the noises. But I, I also want, want to just give props to whoever did the original voicing of R2 or just came up with the beeps and the boops yeah. in the original. A lot of personality. It's incredible how much you can almost tell what he's saying mm-hmm. or at least what he's feeling right. just from a bunch of beeps and boops yeah. and him going, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so you great. know, right. <laughs> uh, I don't want to whistle into the mic. I saw an interview with Diego Luna who was, um, and in Andor. Yeah. And he said that, um, growing up speaking Spanish, people around him thought that R2D2 was actually Arturito or Ar- oh. Arturito. Arturito. Arturito, which is just Little Arthur. So they thought it was Little Arthur for a long time. That's awesome. So in half the world, he's just known as Little Arthur? Maybe, or at least least to Diego's family. That's incredible. Uh, They have to stop in Tatooine for repairs because this is a Star Wars movie and you have to go to Tatooine. They're contractually obligated to in a Star Wars movie. Yeah. (laughs) It's a rule. You will never find. (laughs) (laughs) And the trade viceroy is like, the Jedi are out of range. And Emperor's like, not for the Sith, and steps in this sick-looking dude, Darth Maul. Yeah, bro. First time you saw Darth Maul, it's like yes, <laughs> yeah, right. Awesome. Can't man. wait for this fight, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. Are we supposed to believe he's a type 
of creature who just has those studs and yeah. paint? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. I didn't that, know he was that just is like... A, no, that is a race of uh, what okay. they call the Knight Brothers, I think, right? Yeah. One of the Knight Brothers. Yeah. 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 They have I didn't them. know if he was just really hardcore and got yeah. a lot of tattoos. When they get to ca- uh, when they get to Tatooine, the uh, captain soldier guy is like, the queen wants you to take her handmaiden that definitely isn't the queen. <laughs> <laughs> her, her name, I just felt, maybe it's because I'm older now, but I was like, wouldn't Qui Gon know? I mean, he's a freaking Jedi. Qui Gon so. knows. Like, when you think he would know. But to be fair, Qui Gon kind of seems dismissive of even like Obi Wan in the beginning is trying to warn him about some yeah. stuff he's feeling in the Force, and Qui Gon's like, "Why don't you just chill out? Right? Like, let take the a, big people handle this. Yeah. Take a tums. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like a lot of the uh, masters, master Jedi, throughout this movie at least, and in the second one, I guess they. I, it seems like they're all dulled to yeah. the Force. Like, they're not as in tune as they should be. Right. I think it's probably because the Sith have been gone for a thousand years or whatever it was by this point, right? And they're all like, well, it's not possible for the Sith to be back. Yeah. Also, what exactly are they doing if there's all this slavery that's still happening? And, like, I don't know. And, like, Naboo has this issue. Like, what are the Jedi doing? Well, they were supposed to go and negotiate a you know a settlement, but he didn't even want to interfere in in the war or anything at all. At That's first. what I'm saying. Like, what are we doing here, guys? Go be a Jedi, man. They're supposed to be like monks, so they're supposed to be like these people who don't interfere with anything. Gotcha. And so, I have some things I'm not going to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anyways, like, yeah, take my handmaiden or her handmaiden. Uh, <clears throat> her name is Padme. Queen <laughs> Amashmashma. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not the queen. Definitely not Queen Emo here. <laughs> <laughs> like he looks over and sees a pad on the pad. She's over there pointing at herself. Me? Pad Padme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be Padme. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Justin Timberlake just popped out and popped back in. <laughs> They get to uh, Watto's shop, the little flying Squidward looking yeah, guy. He's the flying Italian Squidward. <laughs> Something. Yeah. Uh, you laid a hyperdrive. Uh, You're not going to find one anywhere else on the planet. Uh, give me a meatball. No one else has a T14 hyperdrive, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Credits? Credits are no good here. <laughs> Only money. Oh, that's so good, dude. <laughs> uh, and we finally meet. Finally, Anakin Skywalker, the man himself, the chosen one. Are you an angel? <laughs> <laughs> You're a pilot? Bostica All my life. <laughs> All my life. <laughs> All my three years. <laughs> All his life, just see a kid, in a, like a baby in a bassinet, <laughs> flying a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> And here comes Anakin Skywalker, his first race at zero months old. <laughs> well, he had the Force, so he could. He could. He's crashed another bod. So many mitochlorians. That's why he's never finished a race. That's why? He was like two years old trying to pod race. Gotcha. Now now he uh, <laughs> he goes over by Padme, and Natalie Portman's like, you know, you're a pilot? And she goes, you're a slave? I'm a person, and my name is Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty good at that. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Long story short, Flying Squidward won't take Republican credits, so they now have a side mission. It's like a video game. They're like, well, and he tries you know. the force on him, but he's like, those oh, the Jedi right. tricks don't work on me. Right. If Tridarians aren't susceptible to Jedi mind tricks, why doesn't the Emperor just hire the entire population of there Tridarians, is. There it is. or have them as the Sith, yeah. or have them as, or train one to be a Sith? Yeah, dude. End of the movie, the doors open, and there's a f- freaking Watto. <laughs> and people run because they're afraid of the insect sounds. Yes, my master, we will get the Jedi. Oh well, they probably don't because of can of raid will take him out. He's just a flying amazing. It's true. Mosquito oversized mosquito. I mean. <laughs> Where was I? Force right. raid. <laughs> Force raid. <laughs> also, I did like when, when they're in this shop, the first time they meet Anakin. Did you see the shot where Qui-Gon's walking up the stairs and R2-D2 rolls up to the stairs and then they cut to the shot of him walking through the junkyard and R2's just up behind I him? I missed that. They just oh. cut away 
to not show him having to negotiate the stairs, but he just somehow makes it up there. He could have so, used his rocket boosters. Yeah. <laughs> right, true. but it's just, but they I just think it's it. funny how it is. They didn't give us the R2 details about how we got there. No. <laughs> is what I understand. Back her up for one. Hold on. Because the, the applause was going. Yeah! <laughs> R2 puts his sunglasses on. <laughs> R2 puts his sunglasses on. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, on the way out of there, uh, JJ Binky gets into a scrap <laughs> with Saboba. <laughs> Sebulba, the uh, pod racer guy, hanging out with his cronies, have, trying to have some lizards or whatever it is they're eating over there. <laughs> Just Anakin's response to that yeah. situation. Anakin bails J.J. Binky he, out. Then he's like, your friend over here picked a fight with a dog, and not just any dog, but Sebulba. He's a tough guy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could yeah. imitate Jake Lloyd doing the alien language because when he was speaking this master be to told you yeah chow chow or whatever it <laughs> yeah. is he says it's just <laughs> <Chet Chaboba. laughs> <Chet Chaboba. laughs> yeah. yeah i thought it was pretty good i did too i was yeah. so ready to be, i mean everyone's like oh he didn't do a great job i didn't yeah. i watched it with fresh eyes because i had seen it before but had never thought about it i thought i did well yeah, let me, let me say this now before we can just get this out of the way, the whole Jake <laughs> Lloyd thing, because I know my brother on the show has taken it, you know, as a as a personal mission to just trash Jake Lloyd. I think especially when we did the Jingle All the Way episode back in the day, you know, same kid, and has recently said he's not going to do that anymore because he saw what happened to Jake Lloyd mm-hmm. after Star Wars and like ruined the guy's life and he yeah. drug issues and all kinds yeah. of things and rehab and really, really had a hard time. Um I will say this. Jake Lloyd, it's not his fault. I don't blame Jake Lloyd one bit for his performance in this movie, which is, yeah, in spots, a little corny. Uh, in other spots, I think better than I remembered, which I, I've got a note to talk about in the scene with his mother here in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's not his fault. I think he did exactly what George Lucas asked him to do. Seconded. Well, yeah. you see the same thing with Jar Jar Binks, and you see the same thing with Natalie Portman, because Natalie Portman's a great actress, and yeah. a lot of her lines sound really weird, and it's because of how they had her do it. That is actually, thank you, that's that's my proof for my thesis that it's George Lucas's fault and not Jake Lloyd's. Yeah, I never thought Jake Lloyd was all that bad, and even when I went and rewatched it, yeah. Last week and it, it's it had been a few years since I I watched it. I'm like uh, you know and that's always Jake Lloyd is oh Jake Lloyd's so terrible. I'm like I don't never remembered him being awful and I'm like he wasn't that bad. Not like you walk away from the movie and be like what a terrible the, performance. There's been right? tons of child actors on this show that we've just roasted because they were genuinely terrible. Jake Lloyd yeah. was not terrible. Right. But you have Natalie Portman, who is a fantastic actress. One of, one of the best actresses working. And at the time, even as a young person. She was only 18, I was, think, when this had, movie. Had did a movie before that called Lolita. She was yeah. a, did a great performance. Okay. Then you get her, who everyone knows is good. So you can take that as your like control in the experiment. Right. And then you get her saying, we need your help. No, I beg you for your help. They, you know, later like on, right? As dry as yeah. possible. Yeah. I wonder if her direction was be as dry as possible and try not to like move your face muscles. Yeah, right. they they turn e- her into the emo burnout smoking right. behind the school. Well, okay. even as Padme, she has some lines that don't really sell. Right. Yeah. And so if you if you do that to Natalie Portman, George, then Jake Lloyd has an, a prayer. Yeah. Not a prayer. Wasn't this you one of, like one of his first movies he'd done anyway? It's probably early on. I mean, he this. had done Jingle All the Way already. So it was pretty early on, though, still in, like, what he's done. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, we'll give him the business on a couple of these lines that are notoriously funny, but I've, I've not got much negative to say about Jake Lloyd, so sorry if you were tuning in for the uh, Jake, Jake, Jake Lloyd, Lloyd trash Yeah. you know, not going to be happening here today. Sorry. All right. So they got their side mission. They got to go get some cash because the Republican credits won't work uh on the way out there with the sebulba scrap anakin steps in uh smack talks sebulba a little bit and then he takes everybody over to his house for dinner and to meet his mother right and 
I don't want to be that guy, but it's a pretty nice house it's for a slave. It's huge. Yeah, it <laughs> Just right? so much space yeah. with, with well, like I mean, appliances. <laughs> right? <laughs> Plenty of food to share with other yep. people. Property's cheap on tattooing. <laughs> He's Gene. able to have a droid that he built right? I'm saying. with all these well, power sources. Like, where does he get all that? And he uh -huh. secretly built his own pod racer, too. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. All of that. And slaves notoriously have a lot of spare time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And energy. That's how it works. Yes, they do. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is also the first time we meet C-3PO, who is turned on by Anakin in his room. He's like, this is my protocol droid I'm, I'm building, and C-3PO gets Why is it so dark? Wobbly. He's My like, parts, parts are, are showing. showing. Right, because R2 this is also the first time they meet. Basically, goes, wah, 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 and he goes, naked, right? <laughs> yep. So you know R2 had to say, bro, you naked as hell right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's had to be no, what he it's, said, it's right? Like, where you close that? <laughs> where you close that? Where you close that? You close R2's that? like, you realize you got guess over, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Put a towel on Sometimes using context clues and responses, you can tell what R2 just said. And that's mm -hmm. kind of the fun thing of interpreting all his beeps and boops. Uh, anyway, they're at, they're at dinner or lunch or whatever. I don't know what time it is in Tatooine. The two sons are always out. Um, he goes, you ever seen a pod race? I'm the only human that can do it. Oh, you must have Jedi reflexes. Hint, hint. And this is, I think, where Anakin starts to put together that Qui-Gon's a Jedi. Because I, he'd already scoped the lightsaber when they were out in the square or whatever, right? And now they're talking about Jedi. And he says, nobody can kill a Jedi. And he's like, oh, I wish that were true. And I see there's no fooling you, Anakin. You know, I'm a Jedi and we're here on a mission to, you know, help the queen. And he goes through the whole thing, right? And they're trying to formulate a plan of how they're going to get this money. And they, they settle on gambling and greed are powerful allies. Let's race the pod that you've built. And we'll use the fact that Tridarians love to gamble and are greedy against him. And that's how we're going to get the money to get out of here. Well, and Anakin is first like, you came here to set us free, right? right? Because slavery is bad. <laughs> and he's like, nah. <laughs> I think you're good. <laughs> you got a nice house. <laughs> he says, I wish I could. Like he couldn't chop. Watto in half and take yep. both what are they of them do? out of there. What are they going to do? Right. Nothing. Nothing. Well, we've already talked about morality being in question overall. They could have just stolen the parts and not risked a kid's life. <laughs> and also, the whole second half of the film right. or one third, I don't know, would be just unnecessary. Just said, uh, Quagon sneaking at night, <laughs> force lifting. Force, <laughs> yeah. force lift. Force yeah. lift. Oh. Whispers right. it. That's it. Have Obi Wan hold Watto down right. and just send R2 in there yeah. to. Carried on on his tray that he serves drinks on. Just and tie up his down. wings. He probably can't walk. With his braid. With his braid. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Do it. yeah, why didn't he just do that? And say, like, no, let's let this four-year-old yep. win a race he's never even finished. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. It's going to work. <laughs> it's like snipers up there. It's fine. I thought this was a moment of good acting from Jake Lloyd where he says, you know, he's like, let me race it. He goes, Mom, you always say that the problem is nobody helps each other, right? And that whole little mm -hmm. thing that he did. I like that. And I thought that was good and well done by him. Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon give each other a side eye. Like, yeah. uh. <laughs> Qui-Gon even starts to look at him. He's like, who's this? Who that boy's daddy? <laughs> right? And I'd never noticed that, that part of the film until this watch. Oh, yeah. I just never... I, you never noticed that, that Anakin no was an immaculate conception? Yeah. 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 That's, that's a little... Um, space Jesus. I totally forgot about that part. Yeah. Well, like, I guess, oh, I guess yeah. Anakin's Space Jesus is not yeah. Obi-Wan. Yeah. yeah. The, that's space where space George Jesus. got it wrong. Yeah. It's definitely Obi-Wan. <laughs> the boy has no father. Oh, word. Let me go stab him real quick. Count them midi chlorians up. <laughs> And is he it? lies to him too. He says, "Oh, I'm just checking your checking, checking your blood infection. sugar." That's right. Yeah, checking your blood sugar. <laughs> you look like you're about to faint. Let me check your blood sugar. You look like you got that diabetes. Hi, stranger <laughs> in my in my house. Just uh, here's some blood. What? <laughs> what? I'm checking it for infections. Anakin, stop asking questions. Mind your business. Yeah, if I'm gonna take you with you eventually, I gotta make sure you're clean. That's right. <laughs> I only take clean slaves. <laughs> Next, to, oh jeez. So, so the next day, if I can move yeah, forward a little please. bit, um, they are talking to a, a small collection, a small gaggle, if you will, of children. One of them, whose name I thought was Ketchup, but I think it's uh, Kidster, which has been funnier or something. Um, Kids. Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Oh, that's ketchup's it. fine. I ketchup, it's ketchup. fine. Um, there, in the gaggle, the top left, there's a tall one, and she has braces on. She's the slave with braces. <laughs> <laughs> Your slave's got to have great teeth. Y'all got teeth. orthodontist yep. treatment? Yeah. I have no slave with no crooked teeth. That's right. 
<laughs> Give me a space dentist immediately. That's right. <laughs> you wearing your retainer? Did I you go this. to Ortho D two? This is where they're. <laughs> this is where they're looking at. Uh, that was good. <laughs> You're just I will like do full of them. R two D two puns for the rest of the evening, right. if you want me to. Go ahead. This is where he's showing them the pod. Pod. Yeah. Pod so reason. Anakin's out there just working on his pod, straight up building a pod. You know, like he's nine, he's doing that, and all these other kids run up and like, "What are you, such a loser, dude? Come on, let's go play with our ball." While he's building a, building a machine pod? from scratch. Right. Well, he got the cool slave job. What? <laughs> so it's so stupid. Like, who oh, loser? Building a pod you're, racer. You're out there in Boeing's junkyard pulling out <laughs> engines to make a pod. We're gonna go play with our ball and stick out here. That's right. Let's go Loser. throw rocks at each other's faces. <laughs> it's way more fun. Fun fact: yes. one of those kids is actually Greedo. Oh, is really? It from, from yeah, the that's funny. Who shot first? He looks who like shot it. First, yeah. I didn't realize that's actually the same character. Oh, yeah. Wow. Same character. Interesting. Oh, wow. <laughs> that makes me want a hot dog. They, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're talking about, you know, like uh, Watto, or, or this is where before the race, Qui-Gon goes up to Watto and he's making the wager, you know. He's like, all right, you know, let's wager, uh, you know, how about you keep the winnings, you keep all that stuff, and if I win, I, you know, I get enough to cover the the parts I need and the boy, right, and the boy and his mother or whatever. Why don't you throw in some slaves while you're at yeah. it? Yeah. The and Anakin, or I should say, Watto's like Sabalba's going. Sabalba's going to win. <laughs> he always wins, and it cuts to Sabalba with like two blue space hoes, just like you know, <laughs> right? hanging out, living his life. It's like Fast and the Furious. Those twi- <laughs> those twilight. <laughs> that's, twi- that's right. See, you know more about this stuff than I. I should probably just say now. I am a fan of Star Wars. I am not like in deep on Star Wars where I know all the things. So as I go through this, shame if we. <laughs> Step on something. I'm just anticipating the emails going. Well, actually, this they're going to come. It's going to come. So I yeah. apologize. The internet will correct yeah. us. Love the movies. I've seen them all many times. Mm-hmm. I, t- I don't go into the, all like the expanded stuff that much. So just so you know where I am Thank in you. my Star Thank Wars. Thank you fandom. so much. Yeah, no problem. We hear you. Anyway, <laughs> he says the, he says not the mother. He's like no pod, no no pods worth uh, two slaves or whatever. But I would think again, I don't know what Shmi's job is, but I would think that the boy was really, really, really valuable to him because he does all that stuff Over in the shop Shmi. more than Shmi. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I mean, I don't know what she does or what he does. Yeah. Whatever. But I was surprised that he wasn't yeah. just like you could have the woman, but not the boy. But I was like, oh. All right. That All right. Unless he's just like hoping that you take the boy away and you get another one later. He's like, the first one popped out for free. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> we'll use Kickstarter. He'll be fine. <laughs> she could just have another immaculate conception, I guess. Yeah. You, right? you never know. You never know. Maybe the force comes back. It's force like, hey, conception. Remember me? <laughs> Just like the forest to roll up after all these years. <laughs> Bro, I got those cigarettes. Force. <laughs> force is out there just getting its check garnered for back <laughs> child support. <laughs> yeah, those midi-chlorians paying child support? No. She had to become a slave just to support her son. I don't understand. He said he was going out for blue milk. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's get to the pod race because that thing was dope. Yes, it was. was. I forgot. Okay, this is where I realized we're like 45 minutes into the movie. We're doing the pod race scene, and I'm like, there's still like a huge battle, a dart, like a lightsaber battle as well, and like all this other stuff that happens in this movie. This is such a long movie. It is. There's so much packed into it, though. It was like two hours and 15 minutes, man. It's crazy. Um, I'm pretty sure the announcer, the two-headed announcer, one of the heads was Greg Proops from Whose Line Is It? <laughs> yeah, it was. Was, was it, it really? Yeah. Did you look it up? Yeah. Because I didn't. I never I never remember. Yeah, gr- one of them was Greg Proops. Oh, I knew. I could tell by the sound of his voice. Are you familiar with him? Yeah, actually, yeah. I did a show with him. Oh, did you yeah. really? Yeah. Awesome. So then there you go. Nicole cool. did a show with somebody that was in Star Wars Episode yeah. 1. Yeah. Well, there you go. We, <laughs> yeah. We know there famous people. So. Okay. <laughs> My Kevin Bacon degree is or slower somehow. For the seven degrees of great. <laughs> yeah, now it's like six. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 Whatever. Now it's six. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, I find them to be too much, though, for Star Wars franchise. It was too modern, yeah. too much for me. Yeah. Was, what's the up, everybody? We got a pod race yeah. here. Going, yeah, I like all that stuff. Now, yeah. there's a million planets. It can be diff- different different planets. It just was a big right turn or left yeah. turn. For but me. Tatooine had already been established, too. Yeah, but these yeah. guys are from Proop's planet. 
Everyone yeah. talks like him. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, that's like helpful. the radio yeah. announcer planet from the 60s. <laughs> Perfect. R2 D poops. <laughs> uh, Beep boop. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say, I think, because there's a mixture here in the stands, I think the costumed aliens just look a million times better than the CGI ones. Uh, you yes. know what I mean? Like yeah. the, yeah, the yeah. aliens that they brought back from like the original trilogy with like the dudes with the three eyes or the wavy yep. heads or oh. whatever, the ones that are in costumes. And then they have like the pod racing ones and some of the ones in the crowd that are like these little weird looking things that I just don't think look as good. Well, and I was even going to say, I forgot to mention this, but like it bugs me still to this day with you watch the originals. And now, unless you have, like, the VHSs, right. they have all these lizards added in. And they showed them in this, too. And you're like, George, why do you got lizards? The freaking woolly mammoths look amazing. They do. Why don't we just have the woolly mammoths? It's, you sell that. That, that looks awesome. great. They yeah. added stuff in what, like, on the, if you just do the digital, they added a bunch of stuff? Yeah, well, there's these big the space DVD lizards. Set, then. There's yeah. uh, uh, stormtroopers that are like riding a, a lizard, yeah. where originally yeah. they were riding a woolly mammoth, yeah. and like all that stuff. Yeah, that's garbage. It's obnoxious. There is a moment I get. I'm a sucker when these movies. I, I the, my biggest thing. I'm a sucker for the for the the force theme. I think that's what it's called, right? Not the, the song. Not the main. Da, 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 da. That's the main like Star Wars mm-hmm. thing, but the force themes for the. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. French horn gets to rock out on that. Does it? Oh yeah. Because we have to feel something, that's, right? We gotta feel that's something. right. We gotta that's feel right. something. That's when the French something. horn the comes French in. Horn in there. So any time in these freaking movies where the je- the force theme comes in, A even if tier. it's just like un- I get goosebumps. <laughs> I, Dude, you're giving me you, goosebumps Lee. right now. With Do you know this. what I'm saying? Because yeah. Even even in episode seven, which isn't great, okay, but The Force Awakens, that moment when Finn has been sliced up and uh, Kylo Ren is reaching to get, and they haven't really kicked it on the whole movie, and he's reaching to get the lightsaber and it's shaking and it flies past him to Rey, and then right at that time they kick in the, the Force theme, mm-hmm. and I was just like, yes, right? Even you know, even though like just even that moment in a movie that's not really working for me, I'm still right. just like. It's, it's the easiest thing. You just turn that on, and I'm immediately like, I'm invested. Hooked, right? I'm, I'm, it's, yeah. it's the French horn, man. So in this moment, all you need. I was just saying, all you need. That's one thing about all the movies. Like yeah. John Williams is so consistently yes. writing just amazing. Stuff. Oh yeah, and he knows when to do it. So this moment when Qui Gon, as as Anakin is in the pod, and Qui Gon leans in, and he says, "Concentrate on the moment." Feel, don't think, right? And then the force theme is playing underneath it. I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm so, feeling too. So good. <laughs> Trust your instincts, right? He's doing the whole the whole Jedi thing with him. Yep. It's just awesome. Uh, even Jabba the Hutt shows up to yeah. watch. Yeah, yes. to watch the race. And yo, Jabba's girlfriend is thick. <laughs> okay, was that a girl <laughs> hut in was. the back though? Yeah, that was okay. a girl hut. Because I know he sure. has in the Clone Wars. He has a nephew, right? I'm gonna say that yeah. was his girlfriend. Okay, yeah, and and don't say. Yeah. What's that? It's a girl. Okay. Yeah. okay. I was say, and don't just say, well, it's his species, of course, because in the other movie, he liked skinny little girls in slave outfits. So, Well, the slave know. next to him with the blue hair is wearing the slave girl Leia. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Leia thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's true. So. Maybe that's his like sister or something. So the pod race, I, we don't need to describe play by play because it's just these guys driving pods in a circle. And Shmi yeah. gets to hold an iPad and, and watch your son. And watch your son on an iPad. Right? <laughs> With sure. not too much It's a first emotion. generation. No. Right. You know, you'd yeah, think like, you'd be like, oh, you know, like, or anything. She's just like. Interesting. Just shaking her <laughs> yeah. head. Like, shouldn't like, be doing this. This yeah. is incredible technology, this right. iPad. Right. <laughs> watch it right here on this thing. Yeah. Space Apple. What kind it's of like, app? oh, they have Fruit Ninja. What kind of apps we got on here? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like George Lucas just told her, "Hey, you're gonna, you're going to be watching a pod race on this thing. Yeah. So just just act just, like that. Just look, look at watch it. things go by, yeah. but yeah. not that her son's in it yeah. going to get yeah. right. shot at right. by the Tuscan Raiders. Tuscan Raiders. Yeah. Uh, the sound design of the pod racing is sick. Can I just tell you, it's my favorite thing of the pod race. Hmm. Yes, just hearing all the yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's that right. That charge that's up good. at the beginning. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh, but, and and." The, the the chittering as it like gears down and then <laughs> kicks on and yeah. powers back up and all it's just all the sound design is incredible in this pod race because there's not much dialogue yeah. you're just listening to these machines cook around this circuit and you know yeah. he like when he's like trying to 
Reroute click it the on power. or whatever. And like he's clicking that button. He's sitting there just clicking the switch and there's no sound. But right. like it all is lined up so yes. good. Like you, you believe that's and making his that little sound. face is so cute when he's got little yes. teeth going. I'm trying. He looks pretty <laughs> intense. Like he looked like he was he was trying. No, for sure. And Sabalba is just taking people out of random, and they're like, Sabalba always wins. I'm like, yeah, Sabalba and his box of wrenches always win. Yeah. <laughs> this dude's just chucking stuff into people's and actually, carburetors. Aren't right. fun if you know who wins every time. So no. I don't see why that's a benefit. I think after a while, right. you kind of want to be like, is he going to? Or who's I'll... taking the bet? You would think gambling would be super easy right. on pod races. Yeah. Right. Because Sabalba always wins. Nobody yeah. would bet. Uh, dude, Sabalba's going to win. I'm not going to bet on this. This dude tried to take out Anakin so many stinking times. And, right. Okay. Why did Qui-Gon make the bet with uh, Watto. Watto? Why didn't he just go to Jabba and just bet like a massive amount of money? Yeah. And then just buy all the slaves on the planet and free them. So far, we've discovered six different ways Qui-Gon could have freed all the slaves <laughs> yeah. in Tatooine and been a good Jedi, but he didn't do any of those. And things. I yeah. wondered if it actually was a working part anyway, like if he actually had it. Yeah, because like a junkyard. It could have just been like, this is a can of orange juice. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. Not to mention, it was such a huge risk for him to gamble all his money on this kid who has not really proven anything. That he's not all. even capable to... No, and, like, and Padme it. is telling him all that, basically, right? Yeah, Qui-Gon's like, it's fine. Yeah, because sure. it was some other one where she goes, well, he... And it's like, Qui-Gon must not know that it's a, you know, not the... It's not the queen, right? But he right. goes, well, the... I don't, it doesn't matter what the queen is, and she, she kind of mutters under her breath, well, yeah. the queen doesn't approve. Yeah. Well, I don't approve. Yeah. yeah fine. Uh, but Anakin wins, ultimately. Which was just done in thrilling fashion. I'll give George's props intense, for that. Yeah. An intense uh, yeah. race. Oh, yeah, intense by race. that last little stretch, absolutely. Right. As they're packing up, Obi-Wan on the, on the phone call, why do I get the feeling we've picked up yet another pathetic life form? That was good. <laughs> See? Even Obi-Wan thinks J.J. Oh. Binky sucks. <laughs> J.J. Binky. I still can't. Okay. <laughs> J.J. Binky. I just... Even he, even he's like he's like the audience in this moment, right? Yeah. That sounds like if Jar Jar was a real person, like if that, those kind of aliens existed <laughs> after he got big on Star Wars, yeah. he would have come out with a rap album so with, as JJ Binky. JJ yeah, Binky. Right. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm, I don't call many people by their full names, Jar Jar Binks. Like I gotta shorten it, or I'm yeah. gonna go and say JJB. JJB. <laughs> Double J. <clears throat> Also, if Liam Neeson and you and McGregor were talking to like a tennis ball on a stick, they might not have even yeah. realized how annoying the no, character would be. I don't think even. <laughs> and, and they're always looking just kind of too high. Oh. I felt like huh. yeah. I did see a just, thing yeah. where he had a he like did. the actor actually had the the head on right, him. Yeah. which is what they were looking at. I think. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's what they were looking at. Yeah. But then when they animated, it, they should have made him just a little taller because their eye line is always just a little off. Yeah, like, huh. I don't know. They're always just yeah, exactly. George Lucas. <laughs> that's it's right. like when people pretend to be blind we're in movies. Yeah, yeah they yeah. just yeah. look looking, up. Yeah, they just look up. Just look up or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what blind people do. Have you just literally <laughs> never met a blind person? <laughs> when he tells Anakin he's free, she goes, and my mother, he goes, and my mother too. And he goes, I tried to, but Watto wouldn't have it. And I'm like, did you though? No. <laughs> did, yeah. You didn't fight too hard, Qui-Gon. Did you really try? He could, could have he could have just bet Watto some more with rolling the dice. Just yeah, do exactly. it again. Yeah. Well, I was just gonna say, let's roll a die again. Here's a because right, he used the force to Use the die, mm -hmm. which know. is probably loaded. Shady, so Watto yeah. probably knew. Just why he up. got so mad about it, yeah. right? But yeah, why not just say, you know what? Yeah, bring your mom too. And by the time she walked out of the house and got on the ship, Watto wouldn't have even known she yep. was gone. Yep. Right. Yep. Did you miss the whole scene where they talk about they're all all slaves have that device? In yeah, them they've got a oh. chip. Yeah, they have a chip, and if they try to escape. They blow, they blow you up. Oh, I missed that part. Oh. That's at dinner they're talking about that. He says oh. they'll, they'll blow you up if you. All right, never I'm mind. I'm so glad you're here. Never mind. Thanks, Kyle. I would have missed. I knew. I saw that <laughs> yeah. part, but I totally didn't. It didn't right. click. Yeah. Didn't I'm glad it they up. didn't show us an example of that. As and, as Andy's right. packing up to leave, he was super dismissive of C3PO. Oh my right. gosh, he was. He's like, "Bye, C3PO. Sucks to suck. I'm out of here. I'm sorry. I guess he's like, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't finish you. Whatever. He's like, bye. I gotta go train to be a Jedi now, 3PO. <laughs> Sit here naked. That's right. <laughs> on the way back to the ship, Darth Maul shows up and attacks, and we yeah. get a brief little lightsaber fight between Qui-Gon and Darth Maul. Before we talk about this, oh, yeah. can we talk about 
how emotionless the mother was to her child yes. leaving for potentially yes. forever. Oh, she, she was, stares her off. Yeah, she's just like, she says, "Don't turn around." So right. And, and she, he turns around. And says, I can't do it, mom. I can't do it. And she's just like, <laughs> she's like you, you just got to do it. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Why didn't yeah. anybody say that before? I want this spacious estate to myself. Damn it, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I'm right. gonna make sand angels around here. <laughs> <laughs> I already have plans to turn your room into something. Like <laughs> I want that to she, be my crafting room. Get the hell out of here. The force is moving back in. I need the space. <laughs> <laughs> she, she would be. She'd be really good as a therapist. She's like, you have anxiety? Just stop. Don't, stop don't have it. Don't, stop it. Don't feel stop. depressed. Don't do it anymore. So I feel like Padme is kind of just a mom replacement for the rest of the film. Just like uh, watching I her. I hope not. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> Even at the end, they have got some dialogue. Well, they, they're like, nothing happens. Yeah, then he's no, just like, but they're laying the groundwork even I, in this movie. I am aware, but I think a lot of people choose a partner because they're replacing a need that they have. So I don't mean uh, literal mom replacement, but like daddy issues, mommy issues, Freudian whatever. Mom. Yeah, gotcha. that kind of thing. Like protector, someone who, like, someone who also has brown hair, same frame, same everything. Yes, that's Seems true. Yeah. a lot like mom. Looks like an older Natalie Portman. Not that excited of a voice. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> she does just kind of stare at him. You are emotionless movie. just like my mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right, but on the way out, though, Darth Maul does attack and has a short lightsaber fight. But he only lights Pike. one of his blades. But he only lights one of his, lights one of his blades. He, Good call. Man knows how to save that for the right moment. Yep. Anakin, this is, he's been a Jedi trainee for five minutes. He must think this happens every day. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I want you know a rave I mean? stick, too. <laughs> <laughs> Just like they're already getting attacked by Sith. He's been there five minutes. Well, I thought it was... Goes, Yippee! It, what I thought was he interesting, did. too, was, oh, was American. that when they're running to the ship, he's like, I'm tired, Mesquite. Yeah, yeah. He's like, drop. There is a whole scene that they don't even talk about that actually happened that wasn't in the film. Oh, really? Yeah, so there's a point when they're actually... When he's taking Anakin from his mother to take him back to the ship, one of those uh, droids, protocol droid things that Darth Maul oh, yeah, sends yeah. out to search for him, it finds him, and then Qui-Gon slices it in half, and it's like, we got to go. So they have to run back. So, so, he, already been knew. so he already knew something was, you know... Coming oh. after him. That's why he was like running. Why to not the leave ship. that in, George? I know, right? Doesn't make any sense. Well, and then it seconds. makes more. And then you're not like, okay, Anakin, way to go. You've been walking five minutes. Right. Yeah, you, yeah. He's just lazy, but really. Right. There was a, a moment when Darth Maul like went in his little cruiser thing or whatever it is, and it went down a ravine, and I was yeah. like, he yeah. totally fell down. <laughs> and, and then he like zoomed back up, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Shows him rolling in the <laughs> sand. <laughs> like I thought this guy was supposed to be tough. Yeah, stuck by the little nubs upside down. All his makeup is all sandy now. <laughs> Makeup. You're such a racist. That's his skin. I, how is that? The actor's oh makeup, okay. James. Oh, yeah, I got you. He's got sand in his Jeez. orange. Thought he thought that Wasn't painted him. being racist. Come, comes back up with a <laughs> lizard stabbed on one of his horns. <laughs> You're orange. such a dick. <laughs> um, all right. Annie, and so now they're on the ship. Because Darth Maul, like, he Jedi jumps. Qui-Gon's like, you yeah. yeah. Up onto the yeah. lull. He's like, just, dr just drive past and I'll jump on. You know, Obi Wan flies it kind of nearby and he just jumps. And Darth Maul just sits there and goes, Well, wish I could do that. Darn I don't it. have force <laughs> jump. I haven't learned that one yet. Darn it. Sunk all my talent points uh, it, into it. It is skill tree. Yeah. <laughs> it is skill tree. He doesn't have force <laughs> jump yet. One well, of the deleted scene there actually, yeah. he actually follows him up there. That one I have seen. He yeah. jumps and they battle in the ship for like a second. Oh, that yeah. right. Which is why Quagun's like, laying when he gets in the ship. Right. You know, at first I was like, why, why is he laying down when he gets in the ship? Is he that tired? No. Like, I don't think he's that old. But yeah. No, because he jumped up there. But yeah. now How does he get him like off the ship? He just... Force bushes or something? Yeah, yeah some, right? I guess. I don't remember. I, I don't only saw it once. Space fighting. It's not very long. No, it's, it's like, really short. It's quick. Hmm. But now it just makes it look like he doesn't know how to force jump, which is kind of funnier to me anyway. So they made Anakin look like a little punk, and yeah. then they make Qui-Gon look kind of pathetic too. In a minute. I mean, for a minute, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah, yeah. That's pretty lame. Yeah. It's a little lame. They could have cut some other things out, I think. Yeah. For sure. Like this yeah. anime, anime. What? It's the <laughs> Anakin and Padme at the same time. <laughs> yeah. That's their couple name. That's where yeah. anime yeah. came yeah. from. Anime. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> there was no anime before 1999. Right, right, definitely. <laughs> anime, <laughs> anime have a heartfelt conversation on the ship. They could have cut this down. Mm. I'm cold. Anakin's, I'm cold. So yeah. is that supposed to mean something? Like, I don't have the force... Enough in my mitochondrion. I because something. he grew up on a desert planet. I guess. Yeah, I think like, it's I know hot. that, but I was like, yeah. is it supposed it's, to be it's cold meaningful? In space. I think you're looking for too much meaning. This is George Lucas's writing. Yeah, I mean, and like what they <laughs> they got the space hyperdrive, but they didn't replace the heater on the ship. 
I mean, well, maybe they're trying to have another reason for her to be like, oh, like to yeah. make them. OK, yeah. look, I talk think about George. Oh, go ahead. I just think Anakin's using some Riz. Is it, like, oh, I'm cold. Is? Will you come cuddle with me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's a blank. Sure wish I had somebody to warm me up over here. Too bad. <laughs> Any 14 year olds? <laughs> Look kind of like my 14 year old mom. queens. Oh, my uh, my daughter was like, how old are they in this? You know, because right. she knows what happens. I'm like. Well, yeah, it's weird when he's nine and she's 14, but when he's 19 and she's 24 in the next movie, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, although that's she, not a big deal. In reality, she, well, I know it's not the same actress, yeah. but in reality, in this movie, uh, she was 18 and he was 10. Right. That's but she's playing 14. Yeah. Right. In this. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Which I think she passes for. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I'm sure she loved that she could pass for eight or 14 at the time, but now it's Probably working so for her. Yeah. yeah. You know? Queen at 14. Queen at 14. You peaked. <laughs> Um, but speaking of some, oh gosh, George Lucas's dialogue, you know, Carrie Fisher rewrote a ton of the dialogue in the original trilogy. No. She's an incredible writer. She's written a lot of books and she's really smart. And so when she got her hands on that script and she's like, George, this gobbledygook doesn't make any sense. And she would just strike out and rewrite whole reams of dialogue. Good for her. Which is why the dialogue is awesome right. in the original trilogy. Wow. Thanks to Carrie Fisher. Now you get George Lucas. Because and and two of those movies he didn't direct either, right? He just wrote. Yeah. Now you get George Lucas directing and writing without that person to check, you know, that mm -hmm. stuff. And this is how you end up with, if I leave, my caring for you will remain. I care for you too. <laughs> Woof. It was so. This is part of those lines where you're right. them reading it. Even the the reading of the line was bad. It's right. just so listless. I mean, yep. yeah. I wonder how many times that he made them retake it and say it exactly how he wanted it said versus be more them drugged. trying to be more dynamic with it. Right. All right. Some of this uh, political stuff I'm going to zoom through if that's okay. They meet with the chancellor, unless you've got something really important to say, which of course. Just want to say the Senate looks cool. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they meet the chancellor out on the landing pad. He's like, "Do you know where Superman is, so he can kneel before me? That'd be great." Nobody, because it's General Zod. Yeah. Okay, that was Terrence yeah. Stamp. Yeah. All right, thank <laughs> you. Uh, <laughs> All the listeners are laughing right now. All right, good. <laughs> the Senate won't act, so Palpatine forces. Well, a, neither will some Pal of the actors. I think Palpatine's kind of well, he was feeding already, this a little yeah. bit, where he's like, "Oh, you know, the chancellor's kind of a." Kind of a wet noodle. Yeah. yeah. He's like, watch, watch, this is going to happen. Nothing's going to. Yeah. All right. So the Senate won't act because, as you're saying, Pavelteen is. I think he's kind of, he knows, he would know how the Orchestra Senate kind of works, that it takes time. But he precedes Padme with like, you know, we can't wait and they're going to just drag their feet. And it's because the chancellor is incompetent, even though it's just how bureaucracy works. Right. Got it. And the Jedi Council is also being stupid. Right? They're just like... Yeah. They don't... Uh, I have a problem with that with them. Yeah. Although I did see... I don't know if this is true. You might know, Kyle. But um, I saw a thing that the Jedi Council was built over an old Sith-like thing, apparently, and that was clouding their judge or their ability to see. Seriously? I don't know if that's true, though. I don't know about that. I, I saw a thing on that. It could be... I don't know if it was, like, canon, though. They eventually bring Anakin before the Jedi Council, and I'm like, yo, imagine being nine and having a job interview with Yoda. <laughs> right? Well, also, um, uh, Samuel Jackson. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Poor Samuel yeah. Jackson. I'd be like, never mind. <laughs> this is a tasty burger. <laughs> <laughs> and ultimately, Yoda senses the right thing with he Anakin. Does. Right? Yoda's dialed into it. Fear leads to hate. I'm not going to try and do the Yoda voice because it's just going to be terrible. Anger. Hate leads to anger. Anger leads to the dark side. Suffering. Or is it suffering. anger? Oh, suffering. Suffering. Yeah. suffering. Yeah. That's right. Let me do that. So it goes fear, hate, anger, suffering, right? Yes. I think it's fear, fear anger, anger it. hate. Fear leads to hate. Oh, fear <laughs> leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. I sense much fear in you, right? Yeah. And so he's got Anakin dialed in. But Qui-Gon's like, shut up, Yoda. I don't care. We're training him. He's the chosen one. Clearly, you can see that, right? Yeah. Well, He's like the religious guy. He's right. Like, I feel yeah. it in my religious bones. And and Obi-Wan's like, you know, they have some dialogue where he's like, well, you never really listen to the masters, and you could be a super-duper master if you would just play along or right. be on the council or super something. Super-duper right? master. Yeah. Yeah. That's I don't know. the next rank of Jedi. Super-duper yeah. Jedi. Just play, just play politics, Qui-Gon. You could be sitting next to Yoda, right? <laughs> well, he turned it down. He was like... Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, he was, he was like one of the only ones who was like, nah. 
I'm good. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. okay. And every time anyone says, may the force be with you, all the people who are or at least grew up Catholic will go, and also with and you. And also <laughs> with you. Uh, Annie goes to see Padme, but now she's back being the queen again. And the queen has to play like she doesn't know who he is, right? <laughs> this is where she's like, we are sure that her heart goes with you. That's right. <laughs> um, does she change costumes every hour? Yeah. Every okay. scene. Every yeah. scene. Because and a different hair, hairstyle. <clears throat> It's crazy. She doesn't usher change. Yeah. Sorry, a Super Bowl just happened. <laughs> so, no, but seriously. <laughs> and I, I remember seeing an interview with Carrie Fisher where she's like, I just watched them, the new movie where my mom was in it or whatever, <laughs> and she changed costumes every time she walked through a door, and I had to be in that same stupid outfit <laughs> for every single movie. Yeah. 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 It's ridiculous. I'm always annoyed if, if a character is like windblown and, you know, across the a plane running and then their hair looks great. Yeah. So oh, yeah. again, yeah. this is the movie where I'm like, come on, the braids, let something right. fly out. That's probably why she had the 17 people that followed her around though. They probably just all were, they were just constantly right. fixing her hair. They're all yeah. hair and makeup. That's yeah. 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 Palpatine ends up getting himself nominated to be the new chancellor after I put forward a vote of no confidence in Chancellor of Alarm's leadership. You know, I think I said that right. That's about yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I loved it. But okay, so this is my question though. Palpatine somehow figures out a way to be in the running, right? I'm assuming he uses the force somehow, maybe. Yeah. Or connections. Political connections. Yeah, political connections. But like, what a long con. Like, he, he literally, he grew up in Naboo. Yeah. Becomes, he gets into politics. The, I don't know, like, does he become a Sith once he's in politics or does he become a Sith, and then come back and be, get into politics. And then, like, how does he maneuver to become the Chancellor? I mean, it's just... See, this is something that where I'm saying is uh, I'm limited because I don't know Palpatine's backstory. Yeah. And I know I'm just and like... I know it's out there to be... I was known, trying to wrap know? my head around yeah. it. Like, how, the, the coordination. You right? know his I'm, backstory? I don't really know it, but I'm just... From what we kind of already know, I'm guessing that he was always a Sith and that he okay. was... This was his plan to assume power and so he was just using right. po politics to get there because yeah. it's easier so. good call though to do that right yeah. <laughs> great job <laughs> they catch a ride back to naboo because queen amadala wanted to wow this, <laughs> that this was is good. the part of the that song was good. Yeah. That was good. the weird owl song this is what happens next they all go back to naboo because queen's like i must return to mine you know my arena i will go back and fight right. with my people and they get right through the blockade because, you know, no problem. I mean, they literally land on the planet. Well, you can go in, no problem. It's coming out. They don't even show it, I don't think. No, they no. don't. They just, they're We're just there. We're here. Super easy. They meet with the Gungans to try and get the Gungans to help, and there's the big reveal that Padme is actually oh, the, the queen. queen. But it wasn't like a giant reveal because they kept showing her... I'm just wondering when audiences who first went to the theaters figured it out. I don't know if it was no. that moment. But this is the moment George is meaning to regret. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, I right. just, I guess I'm commenting on, I don't feel like the way that the switching was handled, that some people weren't like, wait a minute, what? We already knew that. She looks like, unless they were, they were, maybe they thought it was just clones of her. Nicole, do you know who the other Queen Amidala was? No. It's Keira Knightley. Yeah. The, uh, the decoy. The was Kira Knightley. Shut Knightley. the front door. No, yeah. Elizabeth yep. Swan from no. Pirates. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. Because yep. on it's, it's IMDb her. it said like she played both, but I guess yeah. I didn't go far enough down. She was on uh she was the she was the decoy, which is <laughs> funny because everyone always says how the two of them look alike. As right. as Kira became a big actress, they would often confuse Natalie Portman and Kira Knightley. Mm -hmm. And Obviously, even back in 1999, George must have thought they looked alike because he cast her. So that's why you said maybe they needed um, Natalie Portman to yeah. use a British accent to make it easier for Kira. Kira, but I didn't know what you meant by that. Yeah. And now I get it. Because it's Kira Knightley playing the other version. Who can't do an American accent. I, I guess. guess. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I bet she could try. I mean, at this point, I don't know how much Kira had done. Or it might have been her first movie yeah. for all I know. Well, and I don't know how much she was actually in it like i think a lot of times yeah. when the queen's talking or when padme's talking it's really natalie portman but it's more like right. if she's just there's a couple in, times right? as you know uh, where it's the queen and it's not natalie portman and okay here Knightley, and, and vice versa you can see Kira knightley as one of the handmaidens gotcha well here's she is the queen. here's where i thought like here's where the implications are is like how does she know like if they're like we need to make a decision on this and right now and, yeah right now and you're the decoy and you're like uh like uh, i gotta go to the bathroom yeah right <laughs> i've got really bad diarrhea yeah <laughs> 
Come on, Padme. I can't come out. <laughs> she helps me wipe. <laughs> <laughs> she kicks her if it's a yes. This is weird. <laughs> the, the, the Gungans, after she kneels before them, basically, and bends the knees, like, all right, we say I help you, you know. And uh, you bending your knee is worth us sacrificing all right. of our Gungans. Right. My pride is now <laughs> right. better. Well, he, he makes J.J. Binky a general yeah, in a move like, that right. shows he's not fit to hold office. We, Boss Nass. We finally get a... He's probably thinking, we got. We finally get a, a way to get rid of Mr. Binky here. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that Qui-Gon used the Force on him originally. I think this guy's just incompetent. That's, it, that's probably it. But yeah. you're, he probably was just putting him on the front lines. Yeah, he just, yeah. yeah just, let's throw him out on the front lines. Jar Jar, are you going to lead the charge? <laughs> It's a great honor. Perfect. And you're going to do it from outside the shield we're going to generate? <laughs> or his his ego was so um, vulnerable that he was actually really happy with Jar Jar because he's like, you got me to look like a really important person. I'll give you something. Like it, it might not have been, I'm trying to kill you. That's true. Yeah, Fair that's enough. true. All right. So for the next part of the movie, guys, it busts into four different plot lines. There's a four tier plan. Okay. There's the Gungan ground war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's the covert team going in with the Queen and the Jedi's. Mm -hmm. yep. There's the space battle space with, fight. with the Trade Federation and, in a little bit, the duel. Mm -hmm. Darth Maul, so, yeah. Right. So there's four things going on at the same time, and they keep cutting back and forth. But because my brain will explode if we do that, we are going to take these one at a time, okay, to the extent that it's possible for us to do so. Is that cool? It is. So we're going to start with the Gungan ground assault and just talk through that. It was beautiful. The, I, the, the blue sky. I thought the, the shield generator was really cool. Yep. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. On a dinosaur backpack. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm like really old school mixed with new technology yeah. and stuff. Makes it seem like what would be new technology to us was really old maybe technology to them. I don't know. Like their dinosaurs just rolled around with shield generators right. on their back. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, they're actually the ancient aliens that built the pyramids. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, The battle droid ships come up and they like all these little sticks come out with just like a hundred droids hanging off of each one. Right. They all multi-tiered. It just unfold. It they spins all, around. Yeah. They're, they, the, when they zoom in and they show the one, like they show like the row of them and their yeah. hands open up and then they stand up and then their heads all pop up. Yes. That was a pretty cool that was, scene. No, that was yeah. a cool like moment. That. And the moment when they're advancing and it's all the laser blasts against all the shields really fast. You know, I thought that was really, really a cool shot. That looked really cool. Right. I mean, they're taking some shots with the big cannons at the shields, but yeah. they can't get through, so they're marching in and like, and as soon as they come through. It was 1999. Some yeah. of the CGI definitely doesn't hold up today. No. But overall, it's really entertaining. Stuff. No, I, I think didn't, so. I didn't think it was horrible compared to some of the other CGI we've seen, right? For I mean, sure. I think yeah. it's still, it's held up okay. I mean, is it great? Yeah. No, not, you know, by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it still holds up reasonably well. Yeah. I agree. And JJ just keeps messing up. Um, like he kills a bunch of droids by tripping over a droid carcass and like trying to and kick it off of his legs. The, gun. yeah. the gun's just going off. Pew, 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 pew. See, the, the here's the problem I have is I don't think like at this point, I know JJ is like the comedic relief part of it. And maybe that's what kind of bugs me about it. Like I didn't necessarily need the comedic relief of Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. And he, even that scene is like where he's just stomping the ground and the droids shooting these you know his blasters going off and he's shooting other droids like looney it's like, tunes uh, yeah. yeah i mean exactly i didn't this is star wars i don't need looney tunes crap in no, here no what a, what a better moment for jj to finally suck it up and actually do a good job right, right. i think that's a better arc for the character than yeah just yeah. falling down and keeps killing droids yep. right jar jar was made for kids I understand that. Yeah, trying to scoop I mean, up. But the even next but generation. you don't have to here's one thing, you don't have to play down to kids. They're not stupid. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And and I think kids would appreciate, yeah, have them be funny and goofy, but then still make a stand at the end. Or at kids least still like find that. some talent that wasn't that he didn't think was a good thing, yeah. but actually is a good right. thing. Right. Because I don't right. I don't think you needed to do that for kids because I I saw the original Star Wars when I was a kid and loved it. I was like, yeah. I don't know, five in the mid '80s or whatever. By the time I saw it, right, and I was twenty by the time this came out. I don't right. think you need that with Star Wars just because there's, um, it just some you know something magical, mystical about it where you're thinking about okay, what if I was in that galaxy, right? right. I was in a galaxy far, far away. You know, that's really cool. I don't think you need to to make something to draw kids in like that. No, I, I agree. But I, I also can 
excuse some of it, like you're saying, because it is, I, I know what the intent is. Yeah. I just think it still could have been done better for me personally. What are some of the other things that he does accidentally in that battle? Uh, help me out. He, well, he's on the, the uh, tank turret, right? Oh, he, yeah. he like hangs off the tank he hangs turret. Hangs off the tank turret as the whole thing gets like pulled down into yeah. a into a yeah. Because well, the guy throws him a he throws a ball. Him the bomb that yeah. he just goes ooh, 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 and juggles it accidentally into the, well, drops before it the, the before driver. that scene is the part where they start retreating. And he yeah. jumps on the back of that thing that's holding all those like oh plasma yeah yeah balls yeah the plasma yeah. balls and he just they lets them all lets go them all go and they, they roll take, down which they weren't going to use I guess they're just going to run away with them? Yeah, open that hatch and let those things they run. Yeah. If you're going anyways, right? right. If you're retreating. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. But the uh, ultimately, the, the Gungans are overpowered by the battle droids and end up essentially surrounded mm -hmm. at gunpoint. Uh, now we got the covert team going in, right? We got the queen and her, you know, captain soldier guy and some more cronies. And then you've got the two Jedi. And they also brought a nine-year-old with them on this covert mission. Yeah. Why are you bringing Anakin? Chlorians are off the chart. Leave him at the Jedi <laughs> Temple. He can at least they're at least going to let him hang out there, right? Yeah. Leave him. Well, then they have to the spend planet, the gas uh, to go back to Coruscant to get him. They oh, didn't well, want to do that. Gas, you know, gas prices for these ships were just we're, outrageous. We're just going to bring a nine-year-old to retake a planet. Just get him a discman. So I think <laughs> Qui Gon originally was going to leave him on Coruscant, but yeah. when the Jedi said they wouldn't take him, I think there was like they didn't have a place to keep him down, like there. Maybe no daycare or something. As they get into the hangar, he goes, uh, Anakin, find a safe place to hide. This is his parenting, right? Uh, the pilot, pilots get to their ship. Their pilots are start jumping in all the fighters and stuff, right? And one of the fighter fighter ships just grabs R2 off the ground like, you're coming with me. And R the R2 makes whatever the droid equivalent of WTF is, you know, like essentially, <laughs> yeah. right? Just gets pulled up into the ship. And uh, I guess R2, because it's going to be a space battle, you got to have R2 riding shotgun. And uh, Anakin goes, all right, well, here, let me hide in this fully armed fighter. Yeah, like, I don't think Qui-Gon's ever played hide-and-seek with a nine-year-old. No. Like, I've played with my kids before. Let me tell you, they don't know what a safe space to find. Well, you like, have to, to hide. specify where you can't hide. Yeah. yeah, you have to specify where you can't hide for safety and just because of just generally it's, it's a dumb idea. Right. And you also have to specify, like, why don't you try hiding somewhere I can't see you, like the corner. <laughs> like... <laughs> Anakin would have literally just run over to a, like a, a little pillar and stood right in front of it and be like, well, he was a you know, slave and didn't get to play. Eyes. That's true. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. Yeah, so maybe he's maybe all those midichlorians. I don't know. And he want to help. Any and he wants to help when the roll the cheating rolling droids show up, <laughs> and so he accidentally takes off and blasts off into space. <laughs> so he let's accidentally follow, let's follow him. it. Yeah. <laughs> let's follow him before we get to what happens. On the ground, <laughs> a.k.a. the best part of the movie. Uh, <laughs> Anakin flies up to the... There's all these ships coming up on the droid control ship, right? They're going to assault because they got to have a space battle, right? Just like in every Star Wars, they're trying to take down the deflector shield while the ground team is trying to do this, you know, the same kind of thing. Space battles, battles in space. They go, here they come, and all these little ships come flying out of the droid control ship. Pew, 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 it's time for a space battle, which, in my opinion, was totally unneeded mm -hmm. in this movie. But Anakin's stuck on autopilot. Let's get us off this autopilot or we'll both be killed. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> he should have cast you. R2 starts screaming at him in droidies. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> He's like, no. Qui-Gon said to stay in the cockpit, so I'm going to stay in the cockpit. Anakin, let's not act like you don't know he meant on the ground. Right. Okay? Good. Come on, man. That was pretty accurate. My kids do that to me. And he's lot. never had free will, so that, <laughs> why not just rock it out? That is such a kid move. Well, right. I'm going to do literally what you flying, said. But I was told to stay in the cockpit. I'm so, just going to do what I'm told. That's what he told me to do oh, for no, the first I'm gonna time go in my life. Oh, no, I'm going to go this Death Star equivalent. <laughs> <laughs> Death Star equivalent? They don't ever do that in these movies. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, just like... How do we make sure they don't know it's a Death Star? Well, we put the Death Star, and then we put a legal ring around it. Like a donut around <laughs> yeah. it. Like half a donut. Like a toilet seat. We'll just put a toilet seat around it. That's what they did. <laughs> and these fighters start firing at Anakin, and he's like, whoa, we got to get out of here. And I know he says your favorite line in the entire movie right here. How about spinning? That's a good trick. Oh, I say that all the time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's such... 
It's so funny. Kyle's even laughing. It's so stupid. It's just like, I'll try spinning. That's a neat trick. <laughs> or that's a good trick. <laughs> you guys, people are trying to kill you, dude. Just no concern for the threat that's there. No. no. <laughs> Come on, R2. He Let's cr- blast him. He crashes into the docking port, and now he's inside by total chance. Okay. He, by yep. Jedi he made it all the skill. way in. All the way all in. The we, way don't, in. we don't even know how far he went around no. the ring. He, he went, went all the way around the whole donut. He's on the other yeah. side. He's on the other side. <laughs> Tokyo drifting his <laughs> spaceship <laughs> around the bing, entire bing, thing. Bing, 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 <laughs> bing. And then uh, also by accident figures out how to use his missiles. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Fires two missiles into the heart of this thing. Uh, and then course, he's like. Because you got to be on the ground firing missiles. Anakin's like. Like the space Yakuza puts two in the control ship yep. and then just goes. <laughs> and then like, he's like, yippee, let's go. <laughs> right into some sort of important power source that yeah. just happened to be unprotected. No one can yeah. fire into those portholes. <sighs> yeah. um, no, but. No no power source is ever protected in Star never. Wars. I will say. They built a whole nother Death Star and didn't protect it. They did it again. It. Yeah. <laughs> Same architect. <laughs> They should have switched architects. Right. They, all we needed was a Death Star mechanic just crawling into the guts of the second one. Go, well, there's your problem right there. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the home That's inspector it. comes out. Well, you know what? You it's, really got to do something buy about these star holes. Holes. How much is that going to cost, though? Yeah, I'm going to have to ask you for a few hundred thousand. Uh, we just put it in the credit, public credits off of this because this yeah. power core is unprotected. Because I'll tell you what, buddy, if they uh, if the rebels attack again, you're gonna wish you had this thing in here. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? The, they're, well, you know what it was was they were working on the uh, the uh, power core condom that wasn't complete yet to slide over oh, because right. they realized yeah. their mistake. Yeah, Got it. I will say when Anakin flies out though, he doesn't say yippee. He's like no. woo. And like moving, that yeah. cheer that he does, I thought was that felt pretty authentic. No, it was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was good. I like that. Let's talk about the duel of the fates. Yes, you forgot. Let's do it. You forgot this other line. What is the other line? Now this is pod race. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. I was that so was focused on spinning. That's a good trick. It's because I say that to you every day. Yes, but yes. No, <laughs> yeah. this, like, no it's not, Anakin. Um, it's literally Those not. people aren't racing you. They're trying to kill you. <laughs> but there is something that's to what's... be said for if you're not afraid of it, you actually don't make crazy, stupid mistakes. Maybe, perhaps. So there's that's yeah. a little something. It's true. The Duel of the Fates, a.k.a. Just one of the sickest moments in every Star Wars movie. I, I mean, it's it's up there. Take in any of the nine films. I feel yeah, yeah. Duel of the Fates is right up there. Mm-hmm. In the middle of this hodgepodge of some of it is great, some of it really works, some of it is cringe, some of it's like, why are we talking so much about politics? In the midst of this kind of hodgepodge of a movie, there is this scene that just slaps <laughs> and works it like perfectly. It's a, it's it's honestly a miracle. That this came out of this, I felt like. Because here you go from like spinning, that's a good trick to I don't know where peak Star Wars. Right. 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 Yeah. I'm like <laughs> this is Star Wars. Right. <laughs> and it's yeah, on like, the boo, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah. On, I just I, I still couldn't get my head around why the Emperor really cares about Naboo at all. Yeah. He's from Naboo. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay. so well, that's so right, he, that's right he has a vested interest in it for now because he's playing the politics game. Mm. So that's the reason why he cares right now because he's going to play nice with them, get in to be the the chancellor because yes. he just got elected chancellor. Later, you see him kind of navigating more right. in the second film, right? Yeah. Right. But I had the same. I was still wondering that. Yeah. So. Like, why send your best guy there? But I mean, the Jedi. He's, he's, As yeah, they're, he's, yeah. And it, here's the thing. Yeah, I'll just to set it up. As they're trying to get to the throne room. The doors open, and the duel of the fates starts. You know, the the duel of the fates is the name of the score. The score, yeah, you know, yeah. That's why we call it the duel of the fates? And and Qui Gon just goes, "We'll handle this." It's such a great moment. Oh. Like Santa, he's like, Get I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Right? They take it's off. So their, good. They take off yeah. their, now they take off their robes. Like we ain't about to swim. We're about to fight. You right. know what I mean? Right? We got our swimming robes on. <laughs> we got our swimming robes on. Force disrobe. Hold on, wait, hold on, wait. <laughs> Wait, wait for it. Okay, now I'm ready. <laughs> and I bet the audiences in the theaters, first time watching it, freaked out and oh. lost their minds. Also, when Darth Maul had a second lightsaber on yes. the first I lightsaber. I was like, what? Yes. I remember that. I, I remember like, sitting in the theater and losing my mind. <laughs> yeah. Because at this point, I remember sitting there going, wow, I'm so disappointed in this movie. And then it almost saved the entire picture for me. I went back and saw it a second time just because of this scene. In the theater. I didn't have money when I was 18 mm-hmm. years old. 
And I was like, you know, we want to go again? <laughs> I know we got to sit through the whole first, first part, but then we get to do all the things. <laughs> yeah. You know? See, I think I was the perfect age when this came out, because I was eight. Yeah. I was, and I, yeah, I was I was six. Yeah. yeah. So I remember watching this in theaters and just turning to my parents and just being like, when, right. when they, the second lightsaber, and you're just like, this is incredible. Which I th- which is who the movie was made for. And I think that's why now that that generation of the six and eight year olds at the time Have are, grown are older. Yeah. Now there's this new love for the prequels that didn't exist before because all the old people that loved the original Had the were nostalgia. like, this is garbage. Right. Right. Yeah. I've grown in my fondness for the prequels. When I first saw them as a early 20s and mm-hmm. 18, I was like, I was that guy, you know? Which makes but sense. You were like one of those speeders <laughs> in the pod race. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 Sitting watching. But uh, I've grown in fondness for them because of I, I now appreciate them for what they are. But yeah, kids never had that cynicism about the prequels. I feel like that the other generation had. Had, had you guys seen the originals before you saw this one? I had seen all three originals okay. multiple times, and I loved them. But yeah. I mean, as a kid, you watch this and you're like, "It's more Star Wars." That's great. Th- right? Yeah, right. You're, and as you're, a kid, you're like, "That's all I care about." You're not looking at it through a critical lens. Right. You're just like. This is awesome for what it is. Yeah, this is Star Wars. Yeah. Right. And I'm I was someone who'd seen each movie exactly once because once yeah. I'd seen it, I'd seen it. That's right. just how I. Which I appreciate about you. <laughs> here's here's the the part. Oh, I, I don't want to go too in depth on it, but in the same because it, it's kind of minutia. But the zoom ins to start the fight, where it zooms in on Maul, and then it zooms in on Qui Gon like this, and it zooms in on Obi Wan, and the way he they're all holding their. Oh, I kind of like it. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Yes, it was awesome. <laughs> I was like, it's almost like a Chuck Norris movie. They right? usually do the zoom ins before the final fight. What right? if like it was seven, Chuck right Norris? Right on Chuck's face before he's going to light somebody up with a roundhouse <sighs> kick. Dude, Chuck Norris is Qui Gon. Yeah, dude. And they dude. start fighting, and they're fighting, and it's fast, and it's not like a lightsaber fight that we'd ever seen before because it all been kind of, right. like you said before, right. slower and more, me- more methodical. And these guys are going after it, and it was just fantastic. And, and they fight for a while, and ultimately Obi Wan gets knocked off the bridge because it's it's Star Wars, so they're fighting over a bottomless pit because that's what they do. Yeah. You have you to know, these huge. Yeah, because you know, we don't even know what the room is used for. They don't Nobody fill does. anything. It's the in. Jedi it's, fight room. It's the Jedi yeah. fight room. Like, what is the purpose of this room that we we're just, in? We just need a I room to go anybody, to with bottomless pit to th- fight in. Yeah, I think a lot of <laughs> the times they built it. Those rooms are supposed to be kind of like. Probably something with like ventilation yeah. or power. I was thinking like right. garbage disposal. Maybe. Right, maybe it's like, that. It's like yeah. the space equivalent of the boiler room. Yeah, yeah. yeah essentially, it's like it's it's like right. Yeah, the Star Wars version of the eighties uh, right. alleyway with the cardboard boxes. I got you. <laughs> That's a good way <laughs> to put Obi-Wan it. Obi Wan gets knocked off the bridge, catches himself, but for a little bit, it's one v one. Uh, Qui Gon and Darth Maul, and Qui Gon's holding his own. He is and doing awesome. And I love that they cast Liam Neeson for this because Liam Neeson is an adept swordsman, having done like Rob Roy and other period movies yeah. where he had to sword fight and stuff all the time. And so this was He's like fantastic, right up his right yeah. up his alley. As they're fighting, they're going towards this doorway where you see these like red, like a red force field, mm-hmm. and they all open up and they fight their way into the hallway. And at this point, Obi Wan's just booking, trying to catch up. Right? Yeah, and they all get trapped in the hallway because all the force fields close and Obi Wan separated out all the way back at the beginning of the hallway and they're further down. Is that because separated. The, it always does that, or because there's like emergencies going on? There's, I think it's a timed thing. Yeah. yeah, it's I don't, and that's my question is why? <laughs> because there's several I think movies like that where you know in the series where there's just these random force fields for no apparent reason whatsoever because yeah. they don't lead anywhere except down the hallway mm-hmm. they're going mm-hmm. it only serves as uh, you know yeah. some sort of mechanism to i think it's happening build some tension though. between right. you know the combatants yeah i think it's but it's meant to be some piece of some mechanical machine there but in this case it's just yes being used to provide some drama right okay so Maul paces. This is the, I love the difference between the three of them while they're all trapped. Maul yeah. paces like a caged animal mm-hmm. back and forth, just staring down Qui Gon. Qui Gon sits and meditates, and and Obi Wan is like bouncing, like he just wants to get in there and go. Right? It's like the kid ready to go to the zoo. Right. Yeah. So Dad, are we it going? perfectly shows where all their characters are at. Right. And then 
and they all the force fields open. Well, they all ignite at the same time, and Qui Gon and Darth Maul continue their fight past the force fields into this little round room with a pit in the middle. And Obi Wan's booking trying to get there, but he gets caught at the very last force without closing, and and he's at the last one. He can't get in there. So now it's just, all he can do is watch, mm-hmm. and it's just Qui Gon fighting with Darth Maul, and Darth Maul kills Qui Gon. I'm sorry if anybody listening didn't know that. Yeah, stabs him in the spoiler. Stomach. No. Hits him in the face with the hilt, mm-hmm. and then right in his his stomach. That no from you, McGregor, hand. is is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. He really sells. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. And the music is just incredible in that moment. Yeah. It's like. And 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 Qui Gon's face and all that. I think you McGregor was pretty newish, besides the train spotting kind of. All he had done is Danny Boyle movies. Yeah. Up to this point. Yeah. Yeah. This is he was his first big. Job, absolutely. Do you know his uncle was in the original trilogy? No. no. Yeah, Wedge Antilles uh, is his uncle David. Really? His uh, Obi Wan. Oh, his uncle. Wedge. Yeah. Oh. His Wedge. So there's a there's a somebody from that family in pretty much all the movies <laughs> until the most recent ones. But yeah. Just want to put it out there that if anyone, if George Lucas is needing um, brown haired women <laughs> actors, that I'm available. <laughs> she is available. <laughs> So in a second, I mean, the rage boiling in Obi-Wan's face as he's waiting for this. And and Maul is just smiling at him. Because I got to think in Darth Maul's mind, he took out the hard one. Right. Yeah. right? The master's <laughs> yep. killed. Now right. I can take out the power. And so to Maul, he's probably thinking, this is going to be fun. Right? I mean, I he's, just play with smir- my... he's just kind of smirking at him. Yeah. Play with him. Play, play with, with him, him a little. And... Mm-hmm. and Obi-Wan looks like there's steam coming out of his ears. Well, also, he sweats throughout the movie a lot, <laughs> by the he way. He does. <laughs> And that door opens, and Obi Wan flies in a hundred miles an hour. And this is my favorite moment. It's a short fight, but just the rage that Obi Wan fights with, which could not, have sent him into the hole. By the yeah, way, yeah, right. Not not very Jedi like to come in no. like, in a rage, though. Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Because you look, you compare it to what Qui Gon did. Right. Mm-hmm. He's not fully call. trained, though. Remember how it, it was like? Well, I'm still being trained by you, Qui Gon. They're like, eh. You can graduate, and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> you sure about yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have that many mitochlorians, but whatever. He's he's ultimately, he gets knocked down into the hole, and 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 Maul is just toying with him, yeah. you know, yeah. swiping at him, and ends up from the low ground, I want to point out. Right, there <laughs> it is. There it is. Flipping over Maul and slicing him uh, while he f- force pulls his saber, and Maul splits in half as he falls down. Yeah. Well, we think to his death, but we find out that yes. he's not, in fact, dead. This scene kind of bugged me a little bit. Did it bug you? Why? Just because he just kind of was like, what? And then it just. <laughs> oh, like, his reaction yeah. to the flip over to was kind flip. of slow. Yeah. It was like really slow. Like, yeah. I would have, like, if if they had, like, edited it better to see, like, oh, the lightsaber's coming at him. Yeah. And he was, like, distracted by that. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it may have worked a little better. I think that's true because he just kind of stands there. Yeah. But. I'm just happy Obi Wan won. Yeah. Against yeah. somebody who was far more skilled, I would imagine. Yeah. So this. This is the question I want to ask, and I want to hear what you guys think before we essentially get to the end here, because essentially the end of the movie, outside of the typical Star Wars parade, right. we'll watch your career with great interest, you know, Palpatine, <laughs> yeah. uh, Anakin, wink, wink, Darth Vader and the Emperor and all that, and everybody gets their medals and flowers, and here's a big glowing ball for the Gungans, and yay. Everyone looks over at 3PO, and he goes, beep, boop, 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 right, and they go, right. <laughs> and there's one guy with a cone head who looks a lot like Will Ferrell. Maybe it really? was. Might have been. He was in SNL at the time. Uh, and then there's a little scene with, you know, uh, Samuel L. Jackson saying, you know, hey, I know you're going to train the kid, Obi-Wan. You know, it's fine. Whatever. Do your thing. And Obi-Wan's like, yeah, I'll get this. And he tells Anakin, I'm going to train you. And that's like, it's all a little wrap up to just seed the next movie, yeah. essentially. But this is really the end of the movie when Maul dies. Yeah, because, yeah. well, and then there's that conversation between Yoda and Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan, oh, Obi-Wan that's right. Oh, no, not Obi-Wan. It's Yoda and uh, Mace Windu. Yeah. Oh, 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 at the yeah, funeral. Yeah. Yes. And they're like... Did we kill the, pr- the apprentice? Or the master. And yeah. then it pans to Palpatine. Yeah, yeah it's a great They moment. say there's always two Siths, but yeah. I would posit that there's one and a half right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Because the legs don't Fair. seem that valuable. It's, yeah, true. <laughs> he comes back later with Darth Maul with spider legs, I think. Doesn't he at some point? Yeah, Something the, like that. In the series, yeah. In the series. Here's the question, given... How Obi Wan is able to defeat Darth Maul. I, I'm not going to say Obi Wan 
I'm not going to say Obi-Wan is the greatest Jedi of all time, but is Obi-Wan the greatest lightsaber duelist of all time? No. You don't think so? No. He defeats Darth Maul as especially essentially an apprentice. He defeats Anakin Skywalker at the height of his powers in yeah. episode three. He then defeats Darth Vader 10 years after he goes into hiding and just blasts him and cuts half his face off. Oh, I mean, he basically gives himself up to Vader in episode four, right? Vader didn't defeat him. Yoda's pretty good. I know Yoda's good, but I've never seen Obi-Wan lose a fight to some of the highest powered dudes uh, ever. But he the gets only taken reason- out by a... Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say he gets taken out by a freaking uh, bounty hunter. Pretty good. In episode two, he gets his butt Oh, whooped. gosh. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. I'm talking about lightsaber dueling. Okay, strictly yeah. No, I was going to say, the only reason why he lost to Anakin is because he taunted him saying, well, I got the high ground, and that made him want to jump over him. Got that it. was the only reason why he would If it was still hand-to-hand, he would have lost. You think Anakin beats him? Yeah. Easily. I don't think Anakin but, does. I think Anakin's always blinded by rage, yeah. which is his downfall. <laughs> <laughs> but Anakin... Doesn't beat him though. Obi Wan gets that W. But he doesn't. Saying, but that's like saying if they had picked up every third down, then he, the team would have won the right. game. He doesn't do it off of skill though. He does it off of Anakin's mistake. He Th- goes. That's how you win. He goes toe to toe with him, blow for blow, for that whole fight, and puts himself in better position and says, "It's over. I've got the." High. So you can put the psychology of play in with the wielding of the yeah. sword yes. and say that is. Part. Jedi. So in. if if you're including tactics, then sure. But I think we were like you and I were probably thinking strictly like sword Duelist. discipline, right? Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll put it out there. What do you guys think? Is Obi Wan the greatest lightsaber duelist of all time? And again, I'm not saying greatest Jedi. I'm just I've just it dawned on me that I've never seen the man lose. Uh, a lightsaber fight. So I'll I'll leave it to you guys to to ultimate. Let us know what you guys think. I feel like in future movies, Ray always is the one. They're like, well, she's good at everything automatically. So eventually, that <laughs> well, could be her. Right? Didn't he lose in to Dooku? You know that's true. Um, I didn't think about Dooku because Dooku's stupid and it's a lame character. Um, <laughs> did he lose to what? Dooku or didn't he? Yeah, get, did he just get hit by debris? No, no, he no he, he gets hurt bad. They yeah. sword fight. Yeah, they're he gets they're, his arm he gets they're sorted. Everything. Yeah, I haven't seen arm. episode two in so long. Yeah, yeah. They, I, I think yeah, but then he helps. Or it's Anakin beat Dooku in episode three. At the no, point. yeah, yeah. He Dooku both hurts of both of them, and then Yoda shows up before he can kill him. That's right. Yeah. Do you mean R two Dooku or R two? No, no. Okay, cool. <laughs> sorry. All right, I forgot about Dooku. <laughs> All right, so there's Dooku, <laughs> but he doesn't count because he's stupid and Dooku uh, fights dirty though, and he's a Sith. Yeah, and he's a Sith. So. All right, so essentially that's the end of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Oh my gosh! I don't know. There's we've well we've spent some of this time already discussing it. All of the ways that we could make Star Wars better. There has to be a way we can though. There's got to be at least one more way we can. I think there is one better. way. You know, if they did casting differently. Yeah, I think that could be a way. Maybe just make some better decisions around who you put in the movie. Like say, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <gasps> Arnold Schwarzenegger? In Star Wars. In Star yeah. Wars? I mean, they don't have anybody with an Austrian accent. So That's right. They got all these space gotta, people from all these different countries. Right. But no Austrians. No Austrians. Who would you cast him as, though? Are you kidding me? Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> In a second. Listen, I speak, okay? Misa, your friend. That's right. This is going to be a bomb bad. <laughs> Misa thinks that's why you like us. us. Like Misa thinks that's why you be liking us. You saved uh, me again. That's right. <laughs> All right Get that's to the good. speeder. That's pretty good. <laughs> Come on, man. On second thought, let's not go to Gundam. That's right. City. That's right. They don't uh, like me. <laughs> it's not a Gungan. No, it's not a gungan at all. That's right. It's not a gungan at all. (laughs) The ability to speak does not mean you're intelligent. Thanks for the tip. (laughs) (laughs) Why do I think, why do I feel we've picked up yet another pathetic life form? I heard that. (laughs) (laughs) No! That's right. (laughs) 
I come from the planet California. (laughs) (laughs) Be awesome. Like a good neighbor. Jaja is here. Neighbor. I love that commercial. It was good. Well, he drops his R's too. Comes in in his red shirt and khakis. Oh, he could be Queen Amidala. (laughs) Viceroy. Who would be the decoy? I need you. (laughs) The decoy. Stallone. They couldn't decoy. They couldn't decoy. Stallone's too small. They couldn't decoy, and that's why they couldn't be The decoy's like, (laughs) he's like, this is my decoy. No, no. Now I come to ask for your help. No, I beg for your help. Help us, please. This real monotone would be perfect. Yeah, it'd be great. (laughs) <laughs> Dave Parkinson playing alongside of course I will make this movie better there's only one role for me I juggled to Anakin mm, but I fell on Jar Jar it would be hilarious so Dave Parkinson yeah. uh, agrees with us Charlie Francois says not sure I could see Arnold making this any better but hear me out <laughs> replace all the battle droids with Arnold <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Arnold Roger droids. Roger yeah, that's right Terminators Roger <laughs> Roger oh, Terminators? No. T, yeah T-1000s have legions of them invade Naboo and decimate the Gungans hell the invasion would have been over in mere hours <laughs> that'd be great make them all he goes he goes you know what make them all T-800s the Empire is just Skynet gone galactic there you go it is I like that. Yeah. it's good stuff that'd be dope and uh, Sean Spud McHugh says easiest choice make him Yoda that would be hilarious <laughs> listen to me Qui-Gon shut up <laughs> Fear leads to anger, and anger leads to hate, and hate to suffering. I sense all the suffering in you. Understand you do not. <laughs> Would they make him, would they use CGI to scale him down, though? I think just voice him. Like Yoda, oh, okay. just, like Yoda. Yeah. just, just oh be God. Yoda. Instead of... Just, I, I was yeah. thinking like a miniature Arnold. <laughs> Scaled down. No. In a more serious suggestion, I think he'd be in cool as a, another master Jedi on the council. Just have him in there asking Anakin if he can listen to me, Anakin. Right now, I know you did the pictures and you knew everything that was on the one that, that uh, Mace Windu showed you, but I want you to look me in the eye and sense how much I can bench. <laughs> <laughs> I get a little Christopher Walken every once in a while out of this. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy. It's amazing. <laughs> Get Christopher Walken in there on the, as one of the masters. Walken. You know, Anakin. <laughs> it seemed like he got a lot of fear. Right. You're talking to my guy all wrong. <laughs> wrong tone. Do it again. I'll stab you in the face with a soldering iron. <laughs> all right. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's give out some real awards. What do you guys say? Yeah. Let's do it. We'll start out with the most prestigious award we give out, the Will Patton Award for Intensity. You want a war? I'll give you a war! Oh, gloss, I don't want them to gain another yard. You Brits all night! If they cross the line of scrimmage, I'm going to take every last one of you out. You make sure they remember Forever, the night they played the Titans. All right, that's right. Who was the actor who, that gave the most intense performance, or reached the peak moment of intensity? Whatever you, however you want to quantify it. Um, we're going to try because we have just so you guys know, lot. We have four patrons playing along there. We got five people in the room. Mm. We're going to try and get through this as quick as we can, uh, just so we're not here for three hours today. But Nicole, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to you. Who's your nominee for the Will Patton Award? Kenny Baker, the voice of R2-D2. Kenny Baker wasn't the voice. He was the guy the body of in, inside the can. The human of. Yes, but a very valid. So, yeah, that's Kenny fine. Baker, the inside person. The inside person. Of, of R2-D2. R2-D2. All right, I respect that choice for sure. Uh, Dave, don't call him Paul Parkinson, said Ray Park as Darth Maul. Do I need to elaborate? The double-bladed saber? Come on, friggin' awesome. No, I I don't I don't disagree with that either. What do you say, Madela? Yeah, I was gonna say Ray Park as well. Two votes he's, for Ray Park. He's like, uh, he didn't have a lot of lines. He had like anything. six lines of dialogue. Yeah, but the, just the menacingness. I mean, part of it's makeup, part of it's how they did it. Yeah. But um, I mean, just like even when he's burying his teeth and stuff, like yeah. he did, he kind of like just emulates like a, a vicious animal. Yes, mm-hmm. for sure. Yes. Yeah. Great pick. Not to be confused with Ray Parker Jr., who did open the door, get on the floor, <laughs> everybody walk the dinosaur. Totally different. He also was the guy that did the Ghostbusters. Heck thing. yes. Ray Park Jr. Yes. Parker Jr., sorry. Um, so, 
Adam Lofton playing along with us also went Ray Park as Darth Maul. From the moment you see his hologram to when he turns on that lightsaber, his double lightsaber, he was intense. He doesn't say too much, but I think his facial expression says it all. So we got a lot of love here for Darth Maul for intensity. It might be already a foregone conclusion. But look, I am giving this to Ewan McGregor based solely off the intensity that he came through that force field and the, the stare down mm-hmm. and the sweat. And I think overall Maul's performance was, but I, don't, I think that was the most intense moment in the entire movie. That's fair. He, Yeah, yeah I'm not mad at that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, Charlie Francois also went Ray Park. That's four votes. As ultimately, his role is pretty slim with a handful of dialogue, but everything about him is over the top, menacing, makeup job, face paintings, fiery contact lenses, the Jedi eating grin. I like that. To the crown of horns. I remember squealing in the theater when he brandished that double lightsaber. Intense villain and really sets the stage for the Sith, ready to take on and overpower the Jedi. Charlie, great take there, buddy. Mm -hmm. Um, We might be out of votes to overtake Darth Maul at this point, but still for posterity. uh, Kyle, who's your nominee? Ray Park. Oh, well, look at that. There we go. Awesome. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah, I mean, probably for all the same reasons that everyone is. I mean, really, it did come down to that fight. I was really torn between either, you know, Ewan McGregor as Obi Wan or. I don't think Ray Park's the wrong answer. But yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Just want to give up. And before we get a million letters calls, although we still welcome them, I was wrong. It's not Ray Parker Jr. who sang the dinosaur, but it was, of course, who did. Who did Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters. Yes. Yeah. No, it's all good. But I wanted to sing the song anyway, so you're welcome. Do you, girl? Mm -mm -mm. Mueller, who you got as your Will Pat? Yeah, I was was about to. Between two, um, Obi-Wan and Darth Maul, I'm yeah. going to go with uh, Darth Maul. All right, that's six. Sean did go. Sean McHugh did go off the board, and even though Maul's going to win here, he went Ian McDermott uh, as Palpatine. And he said, this man give, give, has given 100% in five movies and multiple TV shows as the character. In Phantom Menace, he was able to show the good side of Palpatine, but you could always see the shady parts and see how he was molding everything to go his way. There is no emperor without Ian McDermott, and that's a valid vote, but ultimately, in the end, Ray Park is going to win, and congratulations to him, the Will Patton Award for Intensity. Well-deserved, Yes, I feel like. For sure. All right, now the award uh, is Nicole's favorite. We are going to give out the (laughs) trash can full of dirt, the award we give out to the worst actor in the movie, the one who had the range of a trash can full of dirt. And when you're in a George Lucas-directed movie, you're on the chopping block, so here we go. I was on the wrong set of pads. So here we go. (laughs) Trash can, oh, trash can, it's a trash can full of dirt. Yeah. Love never dies, and neither do they. Love is eternal, and that's a long time. All right, guys, who lives up to the Steven Seagal trash can? Nicole, you're in the first seat. I love that. Um, <laughs> uh, one of the fighter pilots. Which which one? I'm making it up. I have no idea. Oh, <laughs> I know you hate giving this out. Yes. We can say one of them was terrible. They you know, probably were. I, uh, hmm. Remember how I was thinking that the commentators of the pod race yeah. were too much? You're going to give it to somebody you know, Greg Proust? Nope, nope. So you mean actor, right? It has to be actor, yes. not person in charge of the... Yes. Okay, I'm back to the pilot again. <laughs> I, got I thought you were going to just <laughs> no. nail your friend. No, Greg did a great job. Okay. He did exactly what he was supposed to do. Absolutely. So. All right. Adam Lofton said, I'm not going to go for low-hanging fruit like Jake Lloyd because he honestly doesn't do... That bad, and they didn't give him much to do. Yep. I really want to give it to Jar Jar Binks because I hate his character with a passion, but no, I'm giving the award to Natalie Portman as Padme Amidala. I just don't think her acting chops were there. Adam, valid. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Madela, what do you got? Uh, let me see if I can pronounce this guy's name right. Uh, Hugh Quarshi. Who did he play? He was... Uh, the captain, Captain Panaka. Oh, Panaka. he wasn't great. The guy he that was, was Captain Soldier guy is all I called him. So yeah. bad. And his outfit looked a lot like a costume. Yes, it, it looked like it, no one had ever worn that beard of Halloween. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just went down the yeah party city. No, he, one. Yeah. his his line delivery was not good. Yeah, over I, here we've got the chancellor waiting for us. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Parkinson, don't call him Paul, said, got to go with Bob. He's assuming who Bob would have picked here. Jake Lloyd as Anakin Skywalker. It was a wooden, stunted, and meh performance, which Mm -hmm. I certainly can understand how you would arrive at that. I don't blame you, but I personally disagree, Dave, but I I understand, man. There was some 
There was some good stuff, but there was some cringe stuff in there. A lot of range for a 10-year-old, though. Yes, for sure. Uh, And look, I will never give this to Jar Jar. And you've just heard me blast his character through this entire episode. I don't like that he's in this movie. I know it's for kids. But I'm never giving a trash can award to Ahmed Best because I don't think it's his fault at all. And that dude got crapped on almost as bad as Jake Lloyd did. And I was thrilled when they brought him back for one of the new TV shows and made him a Jedi. Yeah. That was awesome. Oh, that's cool. Well, and I don't think that... But that's that say if you guys want to give it to Jar Jar, go ahead. I'm just saying. Yeah. I don't I don't think that Jar Jar uh, did a, had a bad acting range either. No. I think he he did his part. That was a sure. workout in the VO booth for sure. Oh, for yeah. sure. For sure. I'm going with Natalie Portman. Uh, I love Natalie Portman. She's one of my favorite actresses uh, ever since like I run episode two came out and I was like, wait, hold on. Is she awesome? Uh, and, and I started <laughs> following her career and I, I'm just, I really am a fan of her. So I don't do this with much joy in my heart, but she is so much better than this. She's way older than Jake Lloyd was at the time and could have, in my opinion, done a little bit more to spice it up. A li- even if the, whatever direction she was getting, I thought she was terrible. So Natalie Porton gets my vote. That's two for Natalie. Uh, Charlie Francois also went Natalie Portman and says now no hate for Natalie she's one of the most accomplished actresses there is and she shines in nearly every movie she's in but I don't know how Lucas directed her here she's ex- she's as expressive as a pile of bricks which ironically is about what her hair and makeup must weigh so there you go imagine toting that <laughs> hair piece yeah. around yeah. just like her neck came out looking like Hulk Hogan probably after like what's up guys you know where the weight room is <laughs> you know all her hair was fake because when she's yeah. Padme, it's shorter. Right. But it still had to be freaking heavy. No, I just realized that, though. Yeah. Because I'm like, there's you no way You just realized? How many times you see the movie? I know. Wait, that's not her hair. <laughs> that I don't know why. Seven I just <laughs> it never clicked. Long. Those are just <coughs> clip-ons. You're just thinking, of, yeah. well, how many cancer patients could have wigs if they didn't oh, yeah. have all Jeez. that hair on her? That's a one way to look at it, I suppose. <laughs> all right. Uh, who you got your trash can nomination for, Kyle? Shmi Skywalker. <gasps> Shmi Skywalker. Yeah. That's fair. She's rough. She kind of blows. <laughs> I just had to watch so much more of Natalie, but that's not that's not the wrong answer. I don't yeah. think that's good. Anakin, you're gonna leave now. But I, I support Tough. you in, in whatever you you however you choose to opine. But I actually thought, except for choice lines, like a, some of them, she actually was some. Of, she actually gave some of the most grounded scene work, Maybe. especially when some were like, "I can't believe it." The whatever, Ugh, ready. <laughs> Especially when some people were so over the top sometimes, she kind of just brought it back because yeah. she was living in a slave place and she was just, yeah. you know. I got you. So, wasn't that bad? I, I, I understand. Uh, Sean went with J.J. Binks uh, after I just said I would never do that. It's okay, Sean. Don't don't be alarmed. Uh, Ahmed Best did what he could with what he was given. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I will give him props for bringing the first fully CJ character to life. But, my God. God, Jar Jar was by far the worst thing in this movie. The way he spoke was annoying as hell. He was dumb as a rock. They should have let Boss Nash just feed him to the monster fish. They would have been better off hauling around a trash can full of dirt. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> at least this, at least that way they could have forced through it at some battle droids. Right? <laughs> Why do we get the movie picked up another that. pathetic life form? <laughs> Why couldn't they just force throw Jar Jar Binks into things? That's what I would have been doing. Qui-Gon had so many options. Right. Just roll him at the tanks. That's right. <laughs> Uh, all right, who are you going with over there, Mueller? Well, I think what well, Natalie Portman's in the lead with. She's in the lead, yeah. Three. I don't so, think she can be caught, too, because I don't think anybody else has to. Yeah, no. Uh, which, so I don't have to be the tiebreaker. I was no. going with Shmi Skywalker as well. She was awful. All right, well, Shmi's going to get two votes She's and ultimately come in place. second. Yeah. Honorable mention then to Shmi Skywalker, but Natalie Portman, who, who would have thought she would Not ever me. take home a trash can full of dirt award? Yeah, she's movie. a good actress. Incredible. In SNL, whenever she did a lot of those raps that oh, she did, yes. she had one line when she was like, and please say something about the MF prequel. Yes. Because... The Portman's rap. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> she even has like the Amidala costume oh, I on. I forgot yeah. all about that. Yeah. yeah. She's like, yeah. I've heard it. Yeah, at one point, a, a little girl dressed as Queen Amidala comes up to her to get an autograph, and she just takes it and like chucks it. <laughs> <laughs> just like, get out of here. I, I do blame a lot of that. On George, and I think that's ultimately why I couldn't pull the trigger on her. I'm like, that's. uh, But but here's the thing with that with that line of thinking. With that line of thinking, then we can't give anybody the award because George directed all of them, right? So, 
I felt like we, I don't know that captain was pretty bad. We uh, <laughs> Shmi, Shmi was bad too. We gave her enough of a out by talking about how much yeah. George sucked. Oh, yeah, fair. you know. Time to give the unsung hero award. This is the award we give out to a minor character, meaning not one of the leads. That was the unsung hero of the movie, and it's named after the unsung hero, Steve James. You know, every place you go, there's always someone who thinks he's a badass, right? <laughs> then there are those few who are. Are you some kind of a badass karate boy? All right. Who was it? Who was the character that was the unsung hero of the movie to you, Nicole? Uh, there is a lady who, um, before the race, I think on Tatooine, I think, there's a lady who is standing in the corner either selling something, but she's talking to, uh, I think, Shmi and her son and the two Jedi and she's like a storm's coming mm -hmm. but she's just this precious precious woman storm's yes. coming oh, Annie storm's coming Annie yeah that yeah. one that's my vote that's I you're like going her. with she's like a Mary Poppins oh yeah. I love it alright Adam went with Liam Neeson as Qui-Gon now uh, Adam, I would say that Liam Neeson is disqualified from this, but I'll, I'll at least read what you said about him. He really dove into his character, and when Darth Maul kills him, it was a devastating moment. I agree with you, but he's not unsung. I'd say he's a sung he's hero. He's a sung hero. Yeah, he's like <laughs> a main, <laughs> the main guy for in this, most of the movie. For sure. Madela, what do you got? I was going to say uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson? Yeah. This is before he even gets out of his chair. He doesn't do anything in this, but I just... Yeah. You immediately like I want to know more. All right, that's what color is the lightsaber? Is it what purple? Color it is. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, Dave Parkinson went with Ray Park as Darth Maul as the unsung hero. He needed more screen time. He needed to be fleshed out more. Less mannequin Skywalker. Mannequin Skywalker. That's good. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Mannequins. Yeah, that's, that's good, good stuff. Let's go on. Um, and Not more home. Maul would have made this movie even better. Every scene Maul is in his best movie is the best of the movie. So that's a Ray Park vote for unsung hero of the film. And I think he's in it a little enough that that's valid for me. Yeah. Um, so my unsung hero award is not just the unsung hero of Phantom Menace, but the unsung hero of the entire Star, uh, the entire Star Wars saga. It's R2 freaking D2. Woo. I didn't think he okay. would count. Well, he's a character in the movie. You just said Liam Neeson doesn't count. Liam Neeson's a lead. You think R2 is a lead in yeah, Phantom Yeah, dude, Menace? he's actually the main dude, character. Dude, he's in like three scenes. <laughs> he's the main character. <laughs> okay. R2-D2 is the unsung also, hero he's of this movie. Also, he's a droid. <gasps> hey, no droids. <laughs> R2-D2 is like a pillar of the Star Wars franchise. And literally I literally agree. Hero, like I'm just saying that hero. I didn't know that... We could nominate droids. The, the well, now you know. You want to change your vote to R two? Yeah, kind of. All right, we'll change it to R two. Right, there's, no, there's no rules. Okay, I don't know this. There's I've a, only gone on this like there 20, 30 times. There are rules. You want R two too? R two also. R two too. R two squared. Perfect. Uh, Charlie Francois also went R two D two. Everyone's favorite little droid came back in ninety nine. Introduced with some spaceship heroics. The little dude always brings a smile to my face. He bleeps in the face of danger and <laughs> boops irreverently <laughs> to humans and Jedi alike. He's the hero the galaxy deserves. Uh, Charlie always brings it with his answers. I, I love, love it. Thanks, that. Charlie. That was great. Uh, who's the unsung hero? R two D two. That's right, baby. <gasps> you know what the right answer is. Yeah, I love it. He wouldn't. I love the old lady. Yeah, but yeah, sorry. Rescued everyone. Twice, basically. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. True. What would Christopher Walken do if he was R2-D2? Oh, God. A big boob. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to check. <laughs> I can't. Um, <laughs> all right. Sean McHugh Ooh, said whoa. Samuel L. Mother Effin Jackson. Mace Windu has always nice. been my favorite, other than Obi-Wan. I wish he would have been used more in the first film, but he definitely has given his time in Attack of the Clones and then in the Clone Wars TV show. It's just a pity he went out like a punk in Revenge of the Sith. Did he go out like a punk? He does. Yeah. Palpatine just wipes the floor. Oh, yeah. That's in this movie, Samuel L. Jackson, too, really didn't have a lot of emotion. It just seems to be like a yeah. Lucas thing for the whole film. He was yes. just kind of playing Samuel L. Jackson. I, feel like. I would love to see Filoni Sometimes he's bring full him of back. something under yeah. there. No, for sure. Yeah. I would love to see Dave Filoni bring him back in his own show or the next season of Kenobi. I need more Mace Windu. Is Mace oh, Windu still alive out there, you think? That'd be interesting Could if be. it was uh, his backstory, though. It was, if it was an ambiguous. Like Windu. It was an ambiguous death. It was. Like, we don't see yeah, his, we don't see him actually die. But it, maybe they bring him back as like a, a backstory. They could. Yeah. Although yeah, I don't maybe. know if they can get 
uh, Samuel Jackson to play a younger version. That's what I'm saying. You know, it was so. how Palpatine got thrown down a shaft, blown up, and he they brought and him yet, back. And yet somehow Palpatine he returned. returned. <laughs> uh, puke. That's one of the worst lines in Star Wars history, delivered by. Uh, Poe Dameron, right? And how I feel would... like that was his genuine reaction to the line, too. <laughs> and he's like, somehow Palpatine returned. That's right. <laughs> Why am I even here? How, how <laughs> good Why am I, I even I, here? I'm sorry. How would anyone even know that he got thrown down that well? Yeah. I don't know. Sorry, we don't have to get into that. I don't know. The Midasaurian somehow felt uh, so stupid. something. All right, so it's it's three to two right now. R2 to Samuel L. Jackson as we throw out to Ryan. There's only one character <laughs> In the Star Wars series that does everything. You need a little video played, he does it. You need a ship right. fix, he does it. You need your ass saved, he right. does it. R2-D2. That's right, baby. You want, you want some plans to the Death Star need to get transported? He's got them. He didn't entrust it. You know, Princess Leia gave those to R2-D2. That's right. You got to send a FaceTime? Send That's it through right. R2. Right. Send it through R2. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. R2-Decoy. That's right. Yeah. Where'd she go? You know what I love about Carrie Fisher? I'm a massive Carrie Fisher fan. Yeah. I, you can tell I've seen so many of her interviews and stuff. I like went down a YouTube rabbit hole of Carrie Fisher. That sounds like a pleasant time. She there was three different interviews I saw her do. Um, when like in the late '80s, when she's like 30 or you know, late 20s. Mm -hmm. Then recently, when she was filming Force Awakens, she was still in costume, and there, and she recites. She still knows that entire speech about the help me Obi Wan Kenobi. You're like my father's been in prison or whatever. The, the I don't remember what the speech is. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. And this is our most desperate hour. The whole thing. She can still do it. Well, not anymore. Obviously, she's passed away. But up to the end, mm -hmm. she could just still rip it off. That's awesome. And she was one of those people, unlike Harrison Ford and unlike Mark Hamill, that always embraced being Princess Leia yeah. and always embraced Star Wars, even to the point where Mark Hamill tells a story about how he was trying to be differentiate himself from Star Wars and do a show on Broadway. And she went backstage after the show and gave him crap that he didn't mention Star Wars in his bio. Um, he goes, well, I said, like, I'm known for a, a bunch of space movies or whatever, right? Which is like a sideways compliment to it. Right. And she goes, I'm Princess Leia. You're Luke Skywalker. Just own it, right? Mm. Like, and she just, Star Wars was always a, a thing that she loved. Whereas Harrison Ford never really wanted all that came with Star Wars to be part. He wanted to get killed off. Mm -hmm. And he loves Indiana Jones. Like, that's his thing that he yeah. treasures, right? And Mark Hamill, for a time, you know, he came back and embraced it, but for a time was just trying to be like, no Star Wars. Hmm. Carrie Fisher never that never did that. I'm sure there's managers and agents who were like, you got to get away from this. You'll be typecast yeah. forever. Yeah. I always forget she's in Blues Brothers until I'm watching it. <laughs> and then I'm like, <laughs> Princess Leia's here. With a machine gun. <laughs> and she's crazy. <laughs> or even when I Harry met Sally, wrong. right? I was yeah. like, oh, oh, yeah. That's true. Or the Burbs. Yeah. She's not oh, yeah. 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 And I have a theory that most of our best actors have the best memories because they don't have to worry about the line getting into their brain. They just can live yeah. with those words in their mind. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Well, so it cool. probably helps she wrote it too. Unexpected, but a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> too she probably did. Uh, Surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. <laughs> <laughs> shout out. An un unreal. I didn't think we were going to be shouting out Carrie Fisher, but a shout out to Carrie Fisher. So. Yeah. Um, Awesome. All right. Well, then that means that R2-D2 is going to win. Yeah, buddy. Deserved. Deserved. And guys, there's a lot to get through here. So our, for our top three things, I mean, you can expound on it a little bit, but we got three things from nine people, so or however many people it is. So it's a lot. Eight. Uh, Nicole, what were your three? We're going to board the... I should introduce this first. Mm -hmm. Time to board the positivity train. And whether you hated or loved episode one... Give me three things you thought the movie did well. Think three things you enjoyed from the movie. I enjoyed watching young Anakin enjoy things. Okay. Things that were like fun to him that he got to play with because I, I guess being a slave probably wasn't great sometimes. <laughs> but from the movie, we weren't actually shown that very much. Yeah. Um, number two, I really like when Darth Maul had the second lightsaber. That's yeah. so much fun to watch and be like, what? That's awesome. And number three, I like that the movie that was kind of about taxes and gaslighting, i.e., <laughs> <laughs> you know, financials <laughs> and moving your hand as a Jedi trick yeah. um, turned out to be something entertaining. You know what? That, I just realized that is that is Jedi gaslighting. <laughs> you didn't? You're it crazy. Really you're actually That's crazy. what it is. <laughs> it is. The mind trick is just Jedi it's gaslighting. Just Jedi gaslighting. That's yeah, no, there. credits will do. Credits will do. <laughs> What, imagine him being in a relationship with a Jedi. Nope. That's not what I said last yeah. night. <laughs> <laughs> right. right? Right? And they just gaslight their girlfriends. 
Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, that'd be terrible. No, you want to have pizza again? No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I was going to do the dishes. Exactly. This is or your decision you where we'll eat tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't Jedi's want to rob invented, you of that. <laughs> Jedi's invented gas. That's it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's great. All right, Good Adam call. Adam says uh, number 3 the double lightsaber. I mean, come on, who didn't want that as soon as it came out? Two, the backstory of R2 and C-3PO, which I kind of thought were a little forced, but done well. Mm -hmm. And number one, the pod racing. Mm. Yes. Pod racing was good. All right, Madeline, give me your three. Honorable mention would be pod racing, but uh, dual lightsaber, uh, Obi-Wan, and duel of fates. Yeah. The the score for that Bro. is so good. To this Bro. day, I get goosebumps every time I to hear it. To this day. To this day. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Yeah, uh, look, Dave said the Force wielders, be they Jedi or Sith, were fantastic in this movie. So he loved the lightsaber action, was awesome. Uh, pod racing, great addition. The Tusken Raiders taking pot shots, which we didn't talk about, was kind of fun. That was good. Yeah. The Tusken Raiders have taken up shop over on the side of that mountain. They're like, I'm just like, all right, cool. Oh, uh, if they could have the dude, uh, was he still alive? Um, uh, the dude from Jingle All the Way, I always forget his name, um, who was He's also the cave, caveman uh, lawyer. Phil Hartman. Phil Hartman. No, Is he, he still alive? No, I think he would have been no. shot. Alive. He would have mm -mm. been perfect for that guy's voice. Yes. Oh, God. Phil Hartman <laughs> is the announcer? Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm perfect. always expecting Tuscan Raiders. I'm just a two-headed alien. <laughs> That's all I am. I always, I'm always expecting Tuscan Raiders to just be Italians. <laughs> From Tuscany, you know? Oh, God. Not that, those kind of Tuscan Raiders. Uh, no, just, they yeah. have breadsticks. They're holding, right. they're holding noodles above their head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, you, all you can eat soup salad breadsticks because that it. is true Italian I'm glad that why did Olive Garden never get a Tuscan Raiders tie in oh my oh, not so yet great. not yet coming for our limited there. Tuscan Raiders salad yeah they're just out there shooting breadsticks at them <laughs> <laughs> shoots like right. but not hitting Raw anyone <laughs> uh, the jaw was trying to grab parts of the Tatooine trope I mean plus it spawned one of my favorite N64 games yes the oh. pod racing N64 did you ever play it mm. banger dude banger. great game so good. Great game. <laughs> so good. Um, also, he said, uh, number three, the fact that Star Wars was back. We were, we were getting another trilogy, more content, more discussions, more arguments, more laughs. Gladly welcome. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So, uh, All right. So my top three, Duel of the Fates. I feel like I'm going to hit a lot of the same things people mm -hmm. said. Duel of the Fates, the pod racing, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. I got to just tell you, this is the moment I fell in love with Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi was that moment against Darth Maul. And since that moment, because I liked Obi-Wan in the originals, but he was never like my favorite character. But he is now my favorite Star Wars character. Wow. And when I watched the Kenobi series, I know that got crapped on. I know there were things about it people didn't like, especially the side story with the third sister or whatever. You know, Rave, was it Rava? Reva. Reva, sorry. Okay, whatever. But just the Kenobi stuff, take all that other stuff away, just the Kenobi stuff in that series was incredible to me. Because I love him as that character so much. I was just like, yes, that fight between him and Vader at the end is peak Star Wars. I mean, I'm just like, again, kind of like Phantom Menace, this hodgepodge of a show, this hodgepodge of a movie. And yet in the midst of that, there's just this incredible thing like Duel of the Fates or like that fight in Kenobi. So uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi is my third thing. All right, Charlie Francois says... Uh, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, perfectly cast, man. They just play off each other effortlessly. The richest characters in this movie, thanks to that, or thanks to their duo. Number two, the duel. And then he just goes, F -f 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 I'm not going to say it, but that's like he just spells it out. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> <laughs> the original trilogy was all about the Jedi being such powerful warriors, but the Phantom Menace is where the magic really happened first. In 99, we finally got to see them in their prime doing backflips and stuff. Non-stop action, then the lull with the force field doors, the meditation of Qui-Gon, the rage of Darth Maul, the despair of Obi-Wan, and the soundtrack, which brings me to number one. John, the dude typed John Williams a hundred times in the email that he sent me, okay? <laughs> so I just put it in here as John Williams times a hundred. He's the greatest. Fight me. All you Hans Zimmer <laughs> fanboys can sit down. You ain't got nothing on my guy. Uh, Charlie, I agree with you. I don't think anybody's coming at you for loving John Williams ever. No. I don't think anyone's going to ever fight you on that. No. All right, Kyle, give me your three, your top three things from Phantom Menace. Duel of the Fates. Yeah. Three, obviously. 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 Uh, prime lightsaber battle, yes. lightsaber fights. Yes. Like, yeah. And then, 
I guess the sound design for the pod race. Dude. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So, so good. good. It Because t- the whole thing is just sound design. There's no dialogue. Right. I would it's not listen, even that much music. <laughs> I would right. listen to eight hours of a, of a Spotify <laughs> playlist of just the sound of White effects. noise of pod racing. Just like laying in bed. <laughs> awesome. Eventually you might get freaked out a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Maybe. They're coming. Sean said the practical effects, number three. Number three. This was this last Star Wars film that truly made use of good practical effects, minus the horrible Yoda puppet, which they actually switched out for a CGI. The one I watched on Disney Plus now is a CGI Yoda, but I remember originally yep. that it was a puppet. Yep. And then they were like, oh God, it was bad. It was nowhere near as good as the puppet from the... Why don't you just use the same puppet? Mm. Right. right, you have them. Probably took it home and kept it. <coughs> They're like, "This one has gray hair. What will we do?" Right. Yeah, just put a filter on it. Yeah, switching to CGI was smart. On it. They ultimately switched to CGI for the second one, and then went back and fixed the first one into yep. a CGI one. Right. George loves editing. I know his he films. does. It's yes. his favorite. Uh, they built an entire most Espa city was that was built, and the pod racing stadium was also practical, with popsicle sticks being used as the audience. Huh. Number two, the pod race. What can I say? That part was badass. I'm glad Lucas added more to it for future releases. Yeah, that's extended now, too, when you watch it, the pod race sequence. And number one, Duel of the Fates. Come on. Uh, chef's Kiss, the whole scene, the, the score. Dave Filoni explained it best, stating that this fight was all about the fate of Anakin. Qui-Gon saw into the future and saw what he needed was a father figure, but by him being slain, the dark side won, and Anakin was robbed of the person that truly would have guided Anakin on his path towards being the chosen one, which I feel like is a backhanded slap at Obi-Wan Kenobi, but, you know, Obi-Wan, I don't think, was ready to take on a Padawan no. at the time. No. How old were you when you realized his name wasn't Obi-Wan? Like, uh, the same age that you saw the movie? <laughs> 18. <laughs> okay, right, yeah. Yeah, I just... Yeah. So, uh, Mueller, you got three things for me over there? Yeah, I mean, three pod racing. Yeah. No doubt. I mean, that was just a great scene. Um, I think I'll go with two. I, I kind of like that one. I, I, I think I'll pair them up because I was just going to say Obi-Wan, but I, I like the pairing of, of uh, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. I think Liam Neeson and yeah. Ewan McGregor, fantastic. No, it's good. Uh, number one is just the score. No matter what Star Wars movie you're watching, the score is always on point. I had the soundtrack to the original at one point on CD back in the day. That's how much I love the score. Yes. So... That's, awesome. That's my number one. That's awesome. Well, good number, number the good top threes from everybody. We are now going to arrive at that time where we have to deliver a final verdict. What ultimately this movie has been pulled apart and will continue to be. We're not going to be the last ones to give our verdict on this. And heck, over the last 20 years, the opinions on this movie have changed quite a great deal. If you'd asked me any point in my life, I might have given different answers. Mm-hmm. But today, as it sits in 2024, Nicole. Is it a good movie, a bad movie, or a bad movie that rules? A bad movie that rules. There you go. What what made you land on that? Uh, the individual pieces. There were just lots of them that I think if you just built a better droid <laughs> 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 with yes. the pieces that you had, it could have been better. The music already was yes. fabulous and sound, et cetera, but yes. just needed to give less direction for drugs. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Adam uh, Lofton said, all in all, this is a good movie, straight up. Yes, it has issues, but until you do episode eight and nine, that's uh, they, I will really destroy. Episode one <laughs> is a good movie. Now, but fun fact, Adam always likes to hit us with these fun facts. Yoda is still a puppet for this movie before he, before he turns CG in episode two and three. He did, right? Liam Neeson was so eager to be in the movie that he signed on before reading the script. Wow. He was just like, Star Wars? Yes. I'm sorry, what? Star Wars? Yes. <laughs> I also would be the person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, Madela, what's your final final word here? This is a good movie. Straight up. Wow. Warts and all. I know there's issues we've talked about, but I think the sum of this is better than its parts. Yeah. I think that overall it comes together and Okay. I say it's a good movie. All right. Fair enough. Dave Parkinson agrees with you. He says, this is a good movie. No debate. Well, I'm sorry, Dave, but that's what we do. <laughs> we have to debate. You got some bad Flat out good movie. I remember going to see this at a midnight screening in 99 and just being absolutely over the moon or space station, whatever you see fit. Uh, wasn't disappointed at all. Loved it. Was there stuff I was not so happy with? Sure. Jar Jar left me dry. Jake Lloyd was meh. But overall, loved it. So that's three good movie votes to one bad movie that rules. Kyle. How do you feel about this movie? I feel like it should be a good movie. Mm. But compared to the first three, though, 
And that's where I based off this mm. this judgment. It's a bad movie that rules. All right. So you enjoy it. I enjoy it. But I you're do. recognizing it's a dip in quality. Yeah. Yeah. Because I can't ignore, like when I'm judging this one, I have to go based on its predecessors. Right. That's just like how my mind thinks. That's I, fair. I understand. Yeah. I understand that's why. for sure. Otherwise, it would be a good movie. Yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, Charlie says weird aliens. Check space battles. Check cheeky droids. Yep. <laughs> Lightsaber martial arts. This isn't just a good movie. It's a great movie that absolutely rules. <laughs> I'm a sucker for Star Wars from a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, all the way to the closing titles. The previous episode, 16 years earlier, had the Galactic Empire being defeated, but a bunch of chubby teddy bears with sticks and rocks, or by a bunch of chubby teddy bears with sticks and rocks. I don't care what the critics of the public say. This is a great Star Wars movie with all of its qualities and shortcomings, and I love it. I will say this as you since you brought this up, Charlie. I love the opening of every Star Wars movie when it goes a long time ago yeah. in a galaxy far, far away, and then there's it fades, and there's about a two count of darkness, and then, bam, da -da -da -da, and the whole thing just comes out. I mean, just every time, I'm like, yes, yeah. It's, Go. I love that. And there's nothing like that in the theater. That I wait for that moment every time. Even when I went and see seven, eight, and nine, right? I'm sitting in the theater and they show the long time ago and I'm just sitting back, I'm like, all right, here it comes. Bah! I wonder if anybody you know. ever just shrieked because they were surprised. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's jarring. <laughs> right? If you're not jar, ready for it. It's jar jar. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> Uh, Charlie's wife is a movie producer. He's been writing in for a long time, so a lot of you probably already know that. And Charlie's wife says, uh, always likes to give her opinion for the final verdict and says, sure, this film has its faults. George Lucas is not a great director. Most actors are stiff under his direction. The writing is poor, the plot is clumsy, and the whole thing is just so naive. Uh, but that's also what's so touching about it, this naivete. this It makes these movies so welcoming to all, all ages. On the other hand, there's so much depth that this universe that he creates. Every shot has so much detail going on and perfectly supported by the soundtrack and sound design. Like Jurassic Park, this is a movie that you can go back to anytime, any age with friends, family, and loved ones and feel just as transported as you were the first time you saw it. So mm. that's Charlie's wife's points. And I, yeah, I, I don't disagree about some of those points. But Mueller, uh, where do you land on episode one? Episode one. You know, I... I liked it when it came out, right? I was like, yeah, all right, we got the first new Star Wars in 15 years, however long it been, right? Yeah. And I, I liked it then. So if we're translating it, this is you, your dog. I mean, we'll keep it real simple. We're going to recycle a dog scale here. Your dog just knows where to go on shit, right? This is a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> right, your dog makes it outside every time. Yeah. This is a good movie. I mean, yes, right. it has its its flaws, but sometimes good movies have their flaws. Okay, right? It's not every we we we've gone over, you know, on the show millions of times. You know, there's flaws and everything. It's just a matter of how do they come together, how they cover them up, cover them up. Yeah. And I think in this movie, you know, between the end battle with Darth Maul and and um, Obi Wan and and um, Qui Gon and and just some of the other storylines, the pod race, yeah. the score. I mean, it all ties it together at at the end, and it makes it a, a good movie. Yeah. Okay, that's fair, Ryan. Um, here's here's where I've no. There's one more to read. I'm sorry, but I appreciate your input there. I think that's I think that's valid the way you're coming at that. Sean McHugh says, "Good movie." I grew up watching the original trilogy on VHS. My dad took me all the re-releases in theaters in the 90s, and you can bet your butt I was there opening night for all the prequels. So you could say I'm a fan. So look, I know that this movie is not liked by Star Wars fans, and I get it. Who wants their intergalactic saga to begin with an opening crawl about trade route disputes <laughs> uh, or an annoying alien that talks like an idiot and a whiny kid? But it's Star Wars, man. <laughs> It's got everything we love. It's got the cheese. It's got the lightsabers, the score. And we finally got to see the origins of some of our favorite characters. I will always defend the prequels. And whether you like them or not, at least George Lucas had a vision for all three, unlike Disney's <laughs> sequel trilogy. And I will back that up I'm on all that train. day. On I'm on that, that train. I'll get on board that train. Yep. Yeah. At least he planned it out. Don't get me started. All right. So I think that... And this isn't going to be much more than I've already said, but there's so much. I, I struggle to go good movie, and I think that's been the highest. The good movie's gotten the most of the votes, I think, right? The two bad movie that rules. All the patrons said good movie. You guys said good movie. I can't get there. 
I, I watch the movie and if I see a movie and I can see a hundred different ways it could have been made better, mm -hmm. I have a hard time going, that was great. Because I, I just, the way my brain works, uh, I, I just can't look past some of that stuff. Um, the acting, <sighs> John Williams almost saves the day. Like he almost just, it's actually an incredible feat. He almost single-handedly makes this a good movie. Hmm. Just him, just on his own, right? So all the respect in the world there. Uh, and, and, and I respect George Lucas for his world building unmatched, uh, his lore unmatched. Uh, he just has severe limitations as a director when it comes to not the technical side of things. I mean, gosh, the pod racing race. Imagine, look what he can do when he doesn't have to have an actor speak or say, <laughs> yeah. or say anything. Do you know what I That's mean? That's fair. Uh, you know, he can, he can work magic. So he's got incredible capabilities as a filmmaker, but he's very limited in writing, uh, not writing, uh, uh, macro, but in the micro, in the dialogue and conversational stuff. conversational writing, and in the direction of actors, um, and so I love this movie, but it's a bad movie that rules for me personally for that reason. Um, I like it so much more now than I used to, but I'm there's just I don't know if I could ever get to to where you guys are at on mm -hmm. it. That's fine. Um, yeah, that's fair. I do have a newfound love for the entire prequels, so. I think two is as rough as one. If I I haven't watched it in a long time, so I'll, we'll go back and see it. You know, when we get to it, it's worse. It's worse yeah. than one. <laughs> I would say, yeah, uh, okay. Anakin and and Pad <coughs> is it's it's yeah. so not believable. So yeah. rough. Yeah, but I love three. I've gone back to three more than that's why I haven't seen two in such a long time. I've gone back to three multiple times. Three, three is definitely my yeah. favorite one out of the prequels. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. three is what makes the prequels like. All past like ritual yeah. actively makes Raise, one yeah. better. It just yeah. raises the whole thing. No, you're it's right. So good. Yeah. Three right. is That's so thing. incredible. So, I hope you guys liked our takes on Star Wars, and I'm sure some of you were angry about some of the things we said. It's one of those movie series that it just is very divisive, and people get very heated about their opinions. But here, Patrick, uh, Patrick, <laughs> who couldn't be here, but I will make sure come hell or high water, that he is in a seat for episode two uh, when we do Star Wars for that as well. Uh, but look... It's probably the greatest punishment here's, to make him watch two. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's what we can at least all agree on if we're divided about all this stuff. We love Star Wars. Yes. Right? As a, as a, as a whole entity. And we can argue and quibble over what could have happened here or there. But in the end, we all love Star Wars. So I just wish that the fan base took that more of an approach because this has gotten to be one of the most toxic fan bases out in the in fandom. And I don't think it's all Star Wars fans, so I'm not painting with a broad brush here. But there's just so – it's gotten so ugly in the in the preceding years. Yeah. I sent you the that meme where it was Jurassic Park. When oh, yeah. Like, when he's like, hey, everybody, this guy doesn't like any of the Disney Star Wars. See? <laughs> Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> so good. So uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, and let's talk about what we're going to be doing next week. Because next week we're getting back into our wheelhouse a little bit here. We're going to a, an, an, it's either 89 or 91. It's like either early 90s, late 80s uh, karate kicking action movie called The Perfect Weapon. Star and I can't remember the guy's name, but it was like this guy they were trying to make into the next Van Damme or Seagal. Oh, I remember watching the, pre the preview for that with yeah. you. Oh, yeah. And it was like... He the, he ended up making like three movies because he was he's just not that guy. Jeff Speakman, I think is his name. Jeff Speakman, he's like roundhouse kicking dudes in his jeans, like he thinks he's Chuck Norris. It looks so dumb, but he doesn't have the action no. jeans, so he can't get his leg high enough. But the perfect weapon was like his big debut vehicle, and I remember back in the day they're pushing it on all the movie channels and stuff. And then he made two more like straight to video because the perfect weapon just bombed. And so that's what we're doing next week. We're to talk about uh, Bob will be back in, and we're going to be talking about the perfect weapon. So. Just buckle up for that one, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a good one. And I just want to say thanks to Nicole for being here. And on behalf of the mayor, Ryan Mueller, and Ryan Maddell and myself. And Kyle, thanks for coming in, Yes, man. sir. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, thanks for awesome. having me. Yeah, no, of course, dude. Of course. I, I know how much you love Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And you know so much more about it than I do. And so I'm just happy you could be here, man. Yeah, me and too. So uh, appreciate you. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. So thank you for joining us. could have won so much sooner they didn't need six movies just give r2 a lightsaber <laughs> and it's over 
I'll try spinning. That's a neat trick. I'm just saying, if they just, get, if they just made R2 and Jedi, this whole trilogy, the whole series Nobody's is stopped. so much shorter. Nobody's what stopping if, R2. What if R2 became a Sith? <gasps> oh. There the are more movies. Over. The doors part, and it's R2 with the double plated. But it, and it's like, it's, it's on a little arm, it just spins. And he's just like, <laughs> beep, boop. <laughs> oh. Mother something. And he's all black plated. <laughs> C3PO there is there translating for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 